Hello, 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 this is Attorney Mike Gravelin coming to you from Chicago. As you as usual, I've got Ben Bateman joining me. Say hi, Ben. Hello. You can't hear me. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to the feed. Come on, Bill, uh... Well, I'm confused to that too. Uh, why are there only certain charges that have an enhancer? Well, the court's not going to answer that, sir. Those just happen to be the charges. The state is tasked with proving each one of those charges and any uh, special verdict question that goes along with it. Um, beyond a reasonable doubt, they bear the burden of proof, as was spelled out in all of the preliminary jury instructions. So that's how I'll answer that. Um, in terms of the jury view, I did grant the motion previously. Um, it was unopposed. And I'm not hearing anything that would reconsider that. In terms of the time that's being requested, do you have any position on that? Um, do I have to be present for this? I would like you to be, <laughs> yes. That's me making arrangements for you to be there, do, sir. Do I have to be present for it? And also for the record, I don't consent to the name that's being referred to. Well, really? you think you would have mentioned that. Sir, to ask what name you prefer to be called. <laughs> he has about 500 times. We now have evidence in the record where you yeah. provided your did, name. Did you see anything from this morning? Upon questioning, uh, there a little was a video bit, yeah. from when you were taken it was custody. Wild. And yeah, then, I saw part of that. Of course, Detective Parker why I always tell people, as well. never Again, talk I, to the I, cops. It yep. doesn't do any good. Try to refer to the not parties do by any, name because that is how I oh, do himself any I favors. He was sunk anyways, but right. Um, in this courtroom. But when you're in a hole, you um, stop so if, digging. Yeah, and we've absolutely. Been no <laughs> other name, sir. <laughs> he had an excavator with him. And I must, <laughs> at that point, go back to what's on the criminal complaint, which is the initial charging document um, that is what was filed in order to initiate the case. Um. With all due respect, the record should be corrected. I didn't put anything on the record. That was. I didn't state that. I said there's said evidence that. in the record. Well, you evidence. Say you did what, it. What, you referred that evidence to me. So there's <laughs> evidence in the record, but be that as it may, I'm just no, letting never you know that. I'm going to keep referring to you sometimes as defendant, sometimes as sir, sometimes as. Daryl Brooks, sometimes as Mr. Brooks. I understand you may still have an objection, but I've been given no other name from you by which to call you. So that's tough nuggets. Uh, I follow, uh, but there's, there's still a lack of understanding. Uh, are you referring to the name that was in all caps on all the filings? Oh, sweet Jesus. Of course because not. every Answer filing that, that I have. I every, find, I find the response to be. I was trying uh, to hold off on the cocktails. Kind of disingenuous. Sir. <laughs> so um, there was this no. Is a, this is, I believe, a tactic by you to create some type of confusion, which I don't believe there is any about who you are and what name I need to refer to you as. I never said you had to refer to me by, by any specific name. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that every filing that has ever been filed was in capital letters. That's a fact. Yeah, I have I've heard. paperwork to prove that. I don't recognize that name, nor do I know any individual by that name. That's all I'm stating. Well, let's assume for a second that it's not in all caps. Do you recognize that? No, I do not. Okay, well, because we have our answer then. We're well, gonna keep going to keep going, sir. Caps. Um, we're a little bit off topic. In terms of the request by the state, I'll give you one more opportunity to answer that they've requested that whatever we're doing tomorrow morning, whether it be their case, whether it be uh, if you are calling witnesses that we pause about 1145 in order for the jurors, the court and the parties to be taken to that secure location for that jury view. Do you have any position as it relates to that? Yeah, my position was when I answered, I said, do I have to be present? I'm requiring you to be there. Yes. And what reason do I have to be present? Unless you're willing to Just she said. Uh, go yep. through a colloquy with this court and intentionally waive your right to be there, 
because uh, then I'm, I'm going to require you to be there. And that's not explaining why I have to be there, though. Because I'm requiring you to be there, sir. Because ah, she's saying and you just made that decision now. Yeah. Looks that right. way. He's not answering the question. <laughs> I asked him. We will pause I'm, at I'm approximately 11.45 uh, tomorrow morning uh, for that jury view of the vehicle to take place at a as soon as we're able to walk over there. But uh, I think given the logistics of everything, it is on campus, but it is in a secure location um, that will take place approximately at noon. And as I indicated, the court will require the sheriff's department to make a contemporaneous video of that view, which will subsequently be um, made part of the record to capture that. I doubt we'll see that, but... All right. Then they're taking the jury that, to see the car. Yeah. That's, that's going to um, crank up the jury even more, which it should. Yeah. Intentions as to how late we will proceed this afternoon so we can line up witnesses. Sure. I'd like to try to, you know, we had a little bit of a long day yesterday, so I try to balance that out for the jurors. Um, so generally between, you know, 430 and 5 is when I would like to break, depending on where we're at. If we need to go a little earlier because of the witness or if we need to go a tad later that's fine as well okay and then the last item your honor is that um to my knowledge we still have not received anything from mr brooks as to the date and time when he would like his witnesses ordered to appear um i i don't see anything was e-filed um so if he is still requesting the assistance of the state to secure the appearance of those witnesses we will need that information your honor he does not have to give us the exact order but if he could tell us uh um as you had suggested either morning or afternoon and what day of the week he wants these people here we have served the subpoenas that he requested at his request in order to assist him and these witnesses obviously have jobs and other commitments. So it's reasonable to be able to give them a time frame on when they need to be here. With I that, still when don't do you get expect that to rest? With the DA serving uh, these We're still subpoenas. hoping to rest by the close of business tomorrow, Your Honor, unless something unforeseen happens. So we're talking about uh, Thursday and Friday at this point. Yes. Which is what I suggested from the beginning yesterday. But Mr. Brooks, we need to know which particular <laughs> witnesses on which day, whether it's AM or PM, don't need to give me the order. We'll have them come in groupings. But it's See, not let's, reasonable let's get ben that appointed. they all come on the same day. <laughs> Please. So, so, hashtag right, so appoint Ben. To provide that to the DA. <laughs> How am I supposed to provide that to the DA? Please, no. Or you can put it um, just, orally on the record. Where's my garlic? Over to Wisconsin? Yeah, no. I asked no. you to bring it with this morning, and I didn't cover that this morning, so you were put on notice of that. But I'll give you until... I was put on notice of what? Um, let me ask Attorney Opper a question. Would tomorrow morning first thing be um, <laughs> sufficient for the state to make uh, those yeah, arrangements, given Already. that you don't believe you're Hashtag uh, appoint close man. your case until the end of the business day tomorrow? <laughs> I understand what the court's saying. I think that's reasonable with the understanding that if somebody needed to give notice to no, an employer you were the people that had hashtag can't be accommodated, free, then ben. that may affect things from I'm Mr. Free. Brooks. But Don't do this to I me. I think 24 hours notice is generally reasonable and we will do our best. We can assure the court we will do our best there to get go. them here. Um, now that would but be I don't know if we'll be able to exactly accommodate the timing that he may or may not want. All right. So, Mr. Brooks, to, to that because when they, when the uh, subpoenas were served to them, I'm I'm assuming that they would have let any employers or anything know that they were expected to testify in a trial. I don't I don't understand why it will become a problem at the last second. Well, if you recall, sir, at the end near the end of last week, I don't recall exactly what day we were on, but we knew we weren't going to finish with the state's case at some point. And we had a discussion on the record. If there was any objection by you, if the state uh, told those witnesses they didn't need to appear on Friday, so it obviously had to have been before Friday, um, if it, that they didn't need to appear and that they would 
work with those witnesses to provide them with a more definitive time. So now yes. is the time oh, no. we need to provide oh, no. them with more definitive time. <laughs> uh, Mike witnesses. needs to be lead counsel. So, Don't kid yourself. By the start of court tomorrow, you need to bring with you either in writing or be prepared to put it on the record orally, which witnesses you want. Uh, we'll start with Thursday morning, then Thursday afternoon, Friday morning Council. and Friday <laughs> afternoon. I don't need to know the order, but I need to know the day of the week, right? So Thursday um, or Friday, I would just know the dates for those. Thursday I press two. is the 20th, Friday's the 21st, and then which witnesses? Only you know how much you want to question them, so you should be able to gauge if we can get two in that in each morning or afternoon, three, four, whatever. Use your best judgment on that. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to come up with exacts from that. Well, I presume you're going to prepare some questions and you might be able to kind of gauge what? how quickly that will I'm curious, work. what witnesses would he have? Best, that but would you've got to provide some definitive his behalf. It's not reasonable to just his mom. have these witnesses all come on one day. Okay. I'm informed of what you're saying. I just, I just feel like that that same courtesy wasn't afforded to me. He was trying to By set up an alibi. They didn't have to tell me exactly what in his statement, but I called on what day I doubt he's got anybody. Day. Why should? Why is it not? Even, uh, even are, I am requiring. I wonder if his, they are if his mom will call him graciously agreed to or Mr. do Brooks. that because you are and of course the state of Wisconsin. Yourself. Yes. If you so. want them to be out of the loop on that, then I can just put it on your responsibility and your shoulders. But that is she a can call him her little sugar plum. What do you mean by putting it on my shoulders? You can contact them. How am I supposed to do that? You have access to a phone in the jail. So I'm supposed to call every everybody that I subpoenaed, not knowing their information? Yes. That is one way That's to do it. That's how it works. Practicing law. That in, their information is in the It's fun, system. isn't it? That That is highly unreasonable. When uh, one one person that's on my <laughs> so list is not even welcome to have to my that would be a good exception to that. So that's very astute of you to point that out, sir. Won't that would be one exception. On, that's but how other it than works, that, dude. in any event, sir, we're kind of a bit off track. Uh, we're going to get back on track, and you uh, need to provide the information that's provided that I've outlined here today. I don't think that's fair, Your Honor. Oh, your objection is noted, but it's my ruling. The state didn't have to do that, but I have to do that. Sir, I remind you that you are nonetheless required to follow the rules of procedure, just as any attorney would have to if they were representing you. You've chosen to represent yourself. The state has graciously <laughs> agreed to assist. They've served You're the subpoenas this, on you? your behalf. They didn't have to do that, but they did. I mean, They've agreed just, to contact the witnesses just out so that a better <laughs> idea can be provided to those witnesses as to when they need to testify. They're simply asking for have, some basic What a pain policy, trial uh, is. So they oh, can just, then relay that information to the witnesses just, uh, you want to call in this trial. I, I'm, I'm informed of that, Your Honor, but... Most attorneys right, don't know how to try a case, it, and I'm not actually, making that up. Under the conference, oh, I know. confrontation it's a, it's clause in the Sixth Amendment, I, I should be able to have the right it's not easy. To, to have witnesses subpoenaed. It, it shouldn't. Why is that? Again, we're getting the, a little far afield here, sir. Subpoenas were provided to you. The record is very clear on that. We assisted <laughs> you with that. I even reviewed them for completeness. Oh, that's a good and then one, the Judy. state assisted you with serving <laughs> them. That is something they are not required to do, but they agreed to do in this case. No, I did not so nothing see about thrown the Sixth out. Amendment has been violated. They put in them in the regard. courtroom next door yeah, and not let them back. Yeah, so that's like five a, minutes that, later. You need to understand that, sir. I don't wow. understand anything. In, for the record, <laughs> right. I didn't well, bring that's, up the that's word. Let us obvious. continue then. We're going to move on, Mr. Brooks. Let us continue so, with the <clears throat> questioning. So we're going to move on of, to subject matter jurisdiction that no, has yet not. to be proven. Um, Detective Carpenter, you can please come on back up to the witness oh. stand and Madam Clerk, you can have the jurors brought up. So we're not going to address that at all? That's not going to be proven for the record? Is that a judicial determination that you don't have to answer the question, Your Honor? <laughs> is there also a tactic agreement? Madam State would move exhibit 
Does he mean tacit? All right, you want to do that in front of the jury or? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The would have any objections that would need to be heard after Today that. he or, dropped all of a suddenly. Well, can you have them hold? Oh, yeah. Do you have any objection to Exhibit 82? He's got yeah, lots, lots of Dr. Seuss words. What's the objection, sir? What is the relevancy of uh, Exhibit 82? 82 is your interview with Detective Carpenter and Detective Stern. Your objection is to relevance. Your objection is noted. It's overruled, and I will receive Exhibit 82. Let the jury know that when they come so are, are in. Yes. Are you overruling the fact that you? What you want to say is it's relevant, but unfairly prejudicial. That I don't know what the true nature and cause, of, and the that don't know what the true nature and cause of the charges are. Outweighs its probative value. Come on, man. <laughs> you can have them brought out now. All right. Thank you. All right. Your Honor, it's a mask a situation there. At the nature and authority of the court. How come the one guy doesn't have a mask? Yeah, I think he, I think they're just choosing to. Is that a judicial determination? Okay. Won't answer that as well. I wonder well, who the guy behind him is. Gentlemen of the jury. Or if the record reflects that. <laughs> All right, thank you everyone. Please be seated. The record will reflect that Detective Carpenter is back on the witness stand following the break for the lunch hour. And Mr. Brooks, you may start your cross examination. Your objections noted, it's overruled. Please ask your Can't questions. It can't be overruled. It can't be yeah, overruled. Can. <laughs> <laughs> Detective Carpenter. You, you, you might as well just said no backs. Yeah, overruled. No backs. <laughs> I said no backs, Judge. Too bad. You're stuck. Because that always worked when I was a kid. <laughs> Did you attend the parade that evening, uh, November 21st of 2021? Yes. In what capacity? As a member of the Honor Guard. And uh, what time did you arrive? I don't recall the exact time. What time did you leave? I don't recall the exact time. And when you left, where did you go? <clears throat> Our temporary police department. Uh, temporary, explain what do you mean by temporary? So at the time of the incident, the building we are in currently, which was our main building, was under construction. So we were displaced. Uh, what do you mean by at the time of the incident? The time of the parade. And so the, the, the regular station was, what did you say, under some type of construction or something? Correct. And so what what were you guys using for the temporary police station? The uh, city annex and city hall. We're in two different buildings. Does any of those buildings consist of a room for interrogation? There is at the annex. And so when you initially interrogated the suspect, why was the annexed interrogation room not used? Well, when I interrogated you, Mr. Brooks, the annex room was not used because the situation was very fluid. There was a lot of information being learned. We knew this was going to be drawn out. 
there is no municipal lockup facility at the annex, so it could not be utilized. And so the police holding room in the hospital was more sufficient. You asked to go up there for medical clearance. So the police holding room in the hospital was more sufficient than your temporary station, which would have been more suitable. Yes, it was more sufficient. And why would why would a hospital police room be more sufficient than the actual police station that you were utilizing at the time? As I stated in my previous testimony, there was no secure lockup facility at the station. In addition to that, you requested medical clearance at the hospital. So was there a sufficient lockup at the police room in the hospital? We had areas in the hospital. So when you were being treated by the doctor, you could be handcuffed to a bed. There is no place in the interrogation rooms you referred to at the annex to handcuff you to anything. And the doors did not lock sufficiently. And to the best of your knowledge, would, it, would a detainee have that information that you just stated? No. So how come the suspect couldn't be handcuffed at the annex for the interrogation without having to be handcuffed to a specific bench or whatever you refer to it as? Well, I guess I guess essentially what I'm asking is, could the could the suspect still be be properly detained while being interrogated at the annex versus the police holding room in the hospital? And this is the guy that's been objecting about relevancy. So let me make sure I have this straight. Oh yeah. The question is about detainment. Do I have that right? I think the question was very clear, Detective. <laughs> I can't answer it if I'm not going to get clarification. Yeah, it sucks not being an attorney, doesn't it? It sucks being an attorney too, though. So. It, it does, but <laughs> but when you're at trial, it sucks yeah. even more to not Where be one. Where was the suspect <laughs> yeah. taken? It's true. Upon being detained. Oh boy! You were taken, Mr. Brooks. Upon the time you were arrested down to the substation on Les Paul Parkway in Waukesha. And do you recall if the suspect was put into a, a holding room? Yes. And do you recall if that holding Hi, room Connie. had Connie H. something that was secure a detainee? Yes. So why would the why couldn't the interrogation happen there if the suspect can be secured at that location? Well, there are various reasons. And one of the most important reasons is when we took you to the hospital, Mr. Brooks, for your medical clearance. He hates there were that. Now a total of four officers there, myself. You will refer Mr. to them as the suspect. Um, and eventually the two federal agents. Um, the situation was still very fluid. Um, when I began the initial investigate or the initial questioning, it was 11.04 PM and there were still a lot of unknowns. So the determination was made to start questioning you, see what information you might be willing to provide us because with four of us, we were confident we would be able to keep you where you belonged, where we needed you to be as opposed to risking another unnecessary transport because and it's not just personal against you any transport of any prisoner there's a risk so there's no point in taking that risk of that transport when we had the ability to do the interview there especially when there was such limited information that we had if you had i could have escaped 
So FBI that. agents were present at the substation that you refer to? No, Mr. Detective, you're so selfish. They arrived there at one point, yes. Was that known to the descendant? Oh, come on. I don't recall. Like, where is Is it fair to say that the detainee could have been is it fair to say that you could have made sure the suspect was contained while at the substation seeing as how that there was multiple officers present objection i think this has been asked and answered I think yeah. you referred to the substation versus the hospital. So I'll allow Yeah, none of this matters. <laughs> because if he had been in the other place, the substation, Mr. Brooks. he's not on a he's not a but murderous you requested that as a transport, so you're transporting. <laughs> so what I'm explaining to you in my prior testimony. You didn't know that? Is I didn't know at that point if you'd end up going straight to the county jail or what have you. Every transport, as I stated in my earlier testimony, there is a risk. There is a danger. It's not just personal to you. It's any prisoner. So the decision was made to start the interview there based on not knowing where you'd end up for sure, not having all the information that we weren't <laughs> going to take the risk of an, an extra potentially unnecessary transport. Transport back to that facility, you couldn't be held there. You couldn't be held at the cell. There's no bad. You, you refer to interrogation starting at a specific place i'm referring to the substation is it fair to say that there was no interrogation oh. that took place at the substation crackily uh -oh. yes yes that's fair to say there was no interrogation at the substation in waukesha Do you recall what information was obtained at the substation? Yes. Do you recall what that was? Yes. Can you stay for the jury and for the record what information you obtained at the substation? Yes, sir. Basic biographical, biographical information. So um, I obtained your first name, uh, Daryl Brooks. Your last name being Brooks, your full middle <laughs> or full middle name, I should say, being Edward. Um, I learned that you were a junior. The date of birth, February 21st, 1982. Um, additional information obtained was your home address, which was 40, you provided as 4014 uh, North 19th Street in the city of Milwaukee. Um, phone number, your emergency contact, which you provided as Don Woods, um, whether you were employed, going to school, um, I remember talking with you about your tattoos and other physical marks that might be on your body, um, your hair color, eye color, photographs were taken, um, things of that nature. Actually, no, you can't. can't they they can't accept it. Sure, disregard that last statement, sir. Please ask questions. Send it to me. Uh, to testify later. I'll make sure you get a lot of questions. questions. And at that point in the investigation, what did you initially know? At that point, we knew that the Red Ford Escape had driven through the parade route and that you'd been identified as a suspect. And why was that information not provided at that time to the detainee? <laughs> the information at the time wasn't presented to you, Mr. Brooks, because as I stated in my earlier testimony, it was still very fluid. It was very chaotic out at the scene. There was still a lot more that needed to be learned. So is that standard? Plus, I think you already knew that you had just a person gone on a murderous rampage. Person. We didn't need to tell you. Well, we did not not tell you. That's incorrect, and it's, it's misleading to the court. You were informed you were being detained for prowling, loitering, disorderly conduct of that nature. Is that just same bring, as Can I finish, please? I just didn't bring, bring up the parade part of it. Why not? As I stated in earlier testimony, it was very fluid and chaotic and a lot of information wasn't yet known. So I was waiting to receive more information. Did you state in your early testimony if that was standard procedure or not? 
It's standard. So with every detainee that you've ever detained during your career, 18 years, right? Yes. It's standard procedure to not tell someone being detained what they're detained for. As I had stated in my earlier testimony, Mr. Brooks, I explained to you where you were detained for prowling and loitering and disorderly conduct. Based on the lack of information on the parade, that was not brought up. So what I can clarify for the court at this point is that in situations where so limited information exists early on, it is standard not to convey that information to suspects. And what do you mean by is standard? I mean that I don't tell them because I don't have all the facts yet and I'm not looking to necessarily accuse them before I know the nature of what they did or didn't do exactly pertaining to that incident. So it'd be fair to say that it was not a fact as far as the information you learned at, to that point in the investigation. Objection there. Grounds. Um, sustained as to the form of the question. So at that point in the investigation, it, it you think this fact. is bad? Objection, same question. Wait till he tries sustained to navigate the video. The question. At that point in the investigation, I, the information you had at that we time. We may not make it. You yeah. weren't sure about <laughs> I guess which part? All the information that you had. I mean, yeah, they hide the ball so that you spill your guts and tell yeah, about them about the problem and parade. I don't understand which they part know. you're talking about. All the information that you've obtained at that point in the investigation, you weren't sure about. As you just said, you don't try to assume assume guilt or anything like that until you have all the facts. So at that time. At that point in the investigation, is it fair to say that the information that you had obtained so far, you were not sure about? Yes, but does he not understand there's objective I wasn't reality, sure if you were the driver the detective knew it at initially the time or not. But it was believed you were involved. Does it mean that I'm not sure where he's going with this line of questioning? And you knew that to be fact? Yes, the information being provided was that you were involved. So it'd be fair to say you knew that as a fact. Well, hold on. I'm going to not allow him to answer that. It's, this jury will determine the facts of this case. If you want to ask him his opinion, you do that at your discretion. He, he said fact. He said fact. You asked the question, sir. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to <laughs> strike the question from the record. And Mr. Brooks, you're directed to rephrase. I will rephrase, but I do not consent to being called that name for the record. Noted and overruled. <laughs> All right. You stated that there were some uh, loitering and prowling allegations. Why? To, to your knowledge, was, were those ever charged? Grounds. Or oh, the witness may answer. No. Ooh. And do you recall why not? No. I must say, this detective is very good at just answering yes or no to yes or no questions. Yes. Oh, it's impressive. He, he's top notch. He, he's, he's, a, he's a good detective. This is not his first time testifying in court. So like, why wow. did you constantly tell the detainee that they were being detained for loitering and prowling if you, in fact, knew that there, were, there was another reason why they were being detained? Objection asked and Grounds. answered. <coughs> oh, sustained. That's the form of the question and assumes facts, not in evidence. What was the significance of the FBI being present? 
The significance of the FBI presence was the early on concern that this was a terrorist style event. And you said that this was a terrorist element and what, what is the this? Can you explain what the this is? The murderous rampage? When you drove your vehicle through the parade and struck people. Which at the time you stated you did not know. Hi, fact. Christina. Oh. <laughs> that was still being investigated, yes, but I know that's what occurred now. Now versus then. Initially, it was unknown if you drove. That's that's what I was stated. That was the question. But the investigation showed that you were the driver of the vehicle. <coughs> and initially, you didn't provide that information, correct? Correct. So, do you I know if tell you the something FBI you already knew? They're that part you of were the driver of the vehicle. <laughs> yeah. So my eventually bad. the investigation was strictly run by our department. <laughs> and do you recall why that decision was made? My understanding is there wasn't a terrorism link. I'm sure throughout your uh career you've done lots of interrogations are they usually uh multiple officers that do the interrogation or usually just one it can depend on the circumstance it's not always more than one but it can be and what would you estimate would be the normal procedure for interrogation as far as law enforcement wise I really can't speak to that. I, I think every department probably has their own potential way of doing things. Uh, up until that point in your career, when you interrogated the detainee, had you ever conducted a, an interrogation with FBI present? Not prior to that day, no. You made reference to a uh, uh, car key being found. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. Did you yourself find the car key? No, I did not. Dun, dun, dun. Were you told by other law enforcement? <laughs> we didn't put sound effects here with it. To... I guess told what exactly? That a car key was found. I was not specifically. Your items that were located on you during the search were turned over to Detective Stern, and the car key was one of those items. And to the best of your knowledge, you didn't have that information at the time, correct? At which time? At, which, at the time that uh, at the time that the detainee was detained in the substation. Thank you for that clarification. Go ahead and answer. I just want to make sure I, I guess that I understand. So you're asking me what I knew about the key or if I knew where it was found at the substate. I don't understand. Can you clarify that, sir? Uh, I guess the clarity oh that you may be looking for <laughs> is. <laughs> what was found and brought into the substation? Okay. He is not good. The, the witness is excellent. And <laughs> other items that I alluded to in my earlier testimony include your photo ID and credit cards with your name or debit card, credit and or debit cards with your name on them. That you did not search and find yourself, right? <clears throat> That's correct. Did you and you had my searches? credit and debit card. Can you explain these Amazon purchases? I don't recall if I did or not of your person. <laughs> just 
going nowhere. Oh, hey, this is this is next. He's you know what? So the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow. <laughs> Certain <laughs> items were found at the time that you learned of there being items. African items or European? Found, <laughs> no. No, as in. Oh, as in no. No, I knew those items were found on you in the search. Maybe not the specific pocket, but I knew the officers found those items in your possession. Were you were you at the scene of the search? No. So how do you know where they were found? Because they were turned over to Detective Stern <laughs> as your property. I knew he'd have a good answer. <laughs> how do you know where they were found, though, if you weren't? <laughs> The officer searched you, and it's not reasonable to believe they were randomly in the grass oh, at the house you were at in a city that you've indicated you're not familiar with. Uh, can you strike that last answer from the record? I didn't refer to any house grass. Uh, you asked city. an open-ended question. His answer will stand. Your request is denied. So it'd be fair to say that in the question, I did not mention yeah. the house, grass, or city. I think so. I think that's what say? he's looking for. He's just kind of knocking you off didn't the park with something. It, I know you were found at a house in the city of Waukesha. And I know you're not familiar with Waukesha because that's what you told me when I interviewed you. <laughs> Can you strike that last answer? Oh, request is denied. Stop, stop asking <laughs> the question. <laughs> If you ask the question, he strike that response and answer to my dumb question. Leading question. And direct him. Uh, no. <laughs> so let's try this. You strike my question, and therefore you, right. you made reference <laughs> to his answer. The house where the detainee was found, the grass, the city. Could it be possible that that's where they were found? <laughs> the items that you are referring to. <laughs> yes, no. Maria. The Seinfeld of cross examinations. Yes, it's about even nothing. though it'd be fair to say that you were not present. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Lily Ben Ben Lily. Hi, Lily. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you made a lot of reference to. This guy's the, representing himself. I don't know if you've seen this. Body pain. But it's awful. And, uh, having to not. be checked at the hospital and being medically cleared. Would that be fair to say? If you like root canals, you'll probably like this. <laughs> yes, we took you to the hospital for clearance. Oh Are you yourself a doctor or have any training in the medical field? No, sir. So it would be fair to say that you cannot... <laughs> Yes, no, in fact, I do know a person's everyone. body is fit. <laughs> that be fair to say. I can't explain exactly what another's body is feeling. Correct. So it'd also be fair to say that there's a possibility that you can be incorrect about assumptions made to pain reference. That be fair to say. I think that depends on the circumstance. Um, in this specific circumstance, you yeah, told me. The last follow up if he wants it. Okay. In this circumstance, I've moved to the white claw because I can't deal. <laughs> uh, you made a reference on one of the exhibits. I'm not sure exactly which one it was. It was the uh, first interrogation in the police holding room in the hospital. In that exhibit, you made reference to the FBI being present because you were short staffed. Do you recall that? I don't recall exactly what I said, but I recall acknowledging their presence, yes. And you made a reference to short staff. Can you explain what the short staff mean? 
<laughs> I think you're actually going to explain that, that one. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> We needed that. We needed that, Ben. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Well, we can, you know, if you want, we can get a scholarly discussion on exhibit one periods of detention. Or... I'm referring to. We we did that yesterday. I know it was it was impressive. Uh, can you pull up exhibit one seventy two, please? You refer to the photo of the identifiers and the items found. Is that 172? 172, yes. Well, I don't think, is it 81 then I'm referring to? 81 is the audio recording. <laughs> okay. It's I'm sorry, 81 is the video and audio. Of the... Um... Was it just the audio? <laughs> I was right the first time. Uh, God, <laughs> okay. you... I think it's 81. Oh, we've crossed you that like threshold. The people. audio recording from the hospital. <laughs> uh, yes, Your Honor. Is there a part you'd like to direct the state to when they pull it up? Um, Because it's the audio... Um, uh, I no, I wouldn't expect sanctions. Probably Sometimes as people are detained, but not arrested at him. certain points. So it was played. It is proper at four minutes and twenty-five seconds to fourteen minutes and twenty-five seconds. Do you want it started right at four twenty-five? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay, the state would please assist with that. <laughs> William, I think Mr. Brooks could have used that advice before he mm -hmm. started. Or do you want the whole thing? The I same don't, clip. I don't need the whole thing played. Um, from what I recall, the the point that I would refer to is pretty early. Okay, Lily, well, they've got hours of video. Well, how about we start at four twenty-five and then you? And say he's going to cross-examine based upon this video. Paused by the state. Yeah. Okay, but he he doesn't right. think he needs to bother to learn like timestamps and stuff. It. Oh, it's an, it's going to be a nightmare. I. Hello. Long numbers here. Long numbers. It's Lily. Lily Rob. Ben, I think you know Rob. I'm not sure. Ben, Rob, Rob, Ben. Hi, Rob. Hello. Hi. I'm Jeremy Kowalski from the FBI. FBI. Yeah. FBI. I'm Mary. FBI. They're just kind of helping out because we're so short staffed tonight. So, thank you. Uh, Ready for him to kick the door wide open? From hearing the audio, I'm just going to momentarily flex because I have the coolest 81. panel. Do you recall saying that <laughs> on YouTube? All right, the FBI back. was present because you were short right. staffed. <laughs> that is my voice. I don't recall saying it in the moment, but that—that's my voice. That is your voice. That is me talking. So, from your recollection, do you recall being short staffed at that time? Don't worry, Rob. Ben yes. already went there. And can you explain what the short staff mean? As far oh, as, no. Uh, wow. Well, at that time. Now that you mention it. What the short staff mean? Oh, we were just very short on resources with what happened um, down at the parade route and the mash casualties. And uh, Oh, that's what it means. Let's cue that location. I was thinking we of were, something else. Very short on people. <laughs> and you, you, made made duty. you made reference to the short staff being the reason why the FBI was present. Yes. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> no, I just Your can't FBI take you out of this. I know the case is serious. <laughs> but I'm 12 years old and Ben's ruined it for me now. Yeah, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> you wanted me to raise the maturity level. You picked the wrong fella. I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm not the, sorry. Went, but that's why I had John. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta save you from all your serious law talk yesterday. Maybe uh, put that. Oh, yes, that's no, okay. Well, Brian gets sure like that. He does. It's so tough to get his tooth. <laughs> Yeah. Double quarter pounder <laughs> with God. cheese. What does that even mean? Don't don't don't, even mean? don't, don't encourage them. Don't make encourage reference them. to uh, maybe Christina can explain what short staff right? means. <laughs> yes. And why would you use your the, phone the, for the, 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 the Oh, good lord. 
especially uh, how would I defend Andrew. this guy? Oof, boy. <laughs> It because the camera in the room didn't have audio capability. And say the state and hasn't met their burden, and boy, they have they. <laughs> but just choke out that statement and let them get convicted. The camera that was in the room did not have audio. I don't recall exactly. Prior to the interrogation. And who were you told by? Hospital security. <laughs> was that the first time you had ever used that uh, police holding room? <laughs> in that YouTube hospital? keys. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm a, I'm like so one white client. I can still drive. That you were aware that that room had. No, no one will get hurt in the making of this video. Yes, I knew it had camera. <laughs> and have you ever conducted? An interrogation in that room before that evening. Why does this matter, you asshole? <laughs> interrogation, no, that. but I use the room for other purposes. So, what prompted an interrogation in that room that specific evening? Because he only interrogates innocent well, people. As in I that room. in my earlier testimony, the situation down in the downtown area, of Waukesha, where the mass casualty incident had occurred, was very fluid. It was still unfolding at that time. Um, we were learning more and more and more about what occurred. Um, we decided to start the interview at that location to see if you'd be willing to shed light on for us as to what you did or did not know. Um, and again, I'll go back to statements I made earlier. There's a risk inherent with every transport. I didn't know where your ultimate final location was going to be that night. So to now start bouncing you from facility to facility to facility unnecessarily was just something we made the decision not to do. And at some point, uh, the detainee was moved to the Muskego Police Department, correct? Yes, you were you were moved to the Muskego Police Department later in the evening. And, and when did you learn that that would be a location oh that the detainee would have gone to? He might, just, he might just skip trying to play the video. We made the decision to try to use that location um, after the um, first interrogation attempt. Oh, I'm sorry that I didn't hear the last part. I'm sorry, after the first interrogation attempt. First interrogation attempt. Um, how would you define attempt? <laughs> well, when we were at Waukesha Memorial uh, Hospital that night, Wow. Police holding brilliant, room brilliant cross. Oh, um, I read you your Miranda rights verbatim from the Waukesha oh. Police Department Miranda statement form. Um, and at that time, you indicated you didn't wish to speak with me. So it would be fair to say that the Fifth Amendment right was exercised at that point. Right to silence. Under the Fifth Amendment. Yeah. So acknowledging <laughs> now the fact that the Fifth Amendment right was invoked not to speak, or as you say, was it the right to silence? Well, here's about to come a jury instruction. Why did you continue yep. to record on your phone? Yep. So we are trained at our police department when you do an interrogation. Um, the recording is to be left on um, pretty much until you try to uh, affect transport. Um, so typically what we would do is if our building hadn't been under construction um, and when we'd been able to get you back to our police department, where in that situation we may, may very well have transported you just because we would have had a municipal lockup there and we could have held you for the night. But that again was difficult based on the fact that we didn't have that possibility at the time. So if someone's in an interview room and at our police department, we'll leave that even after the interrogation over now and always have video running. I need him. I can't come make back it this testimony without laughing. Never. Like I was dying inside. I don't know which one. Even once uh, a detainee has invoked their right to silence, you still continue. Well, thank you, Wilbert. Forward. Is that a I will try to find it. Of your agency? There's a lot of chat. Yes, it is. For as long as they remain in the room. And thank you for this one. And so when did you start recording? Are you talking at Washington Memorial Hospital? Correct. Prior to you entering the room. 
So you started recording before the detainee entered the room and you said you keep the recording on until they leave the room. You're not the, de so not the detainee. So would it be fair to say that there should only be recording while the detainee is in the room? No. <laughs> no, that's not what I said, say, Jackass. You did say for the record that that's standard, but nice standard try. procedure in your agency. In it's regards beautiful. to the interview rooms at our normal police department, which wasn't available at that time. Yes. Would it be fair to say that you were not at the normal police department? Yes. However, with the uh -huh. audio, I was still trying to make sure I followed the policy to the best of my ability. Can you show proof of that policy? I don't have it. So it'd be fair to say that there's no way to determine if that truly is policy, if it can be proven. <laughs> How can that policy be proven? Grounds. Got it. Sustained on relevance grounds. But your honor, it's relevant. <laughs> Jury needs to know. This judge is doing a great job, but Lily, I have to tell you, there's been Do a lot of call for Judge Manning located to step in on this trial because we'd all enjoy it a lot more. Grounds. Yeah. She just shot him right now. <laughs> He's always relevant. 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 Not relevant. Next Ready? Question. <laughs> not relevant. That's that look there. There we go. Look that look on a mug. I can't believe he's representing himself. We'll take it up later outside the presence of the jury at our afternoon break, but for now, keep going. I'll follow. i follow. Oh, I apologize. Sydney in the house. Oh, good morning. Wow. So once uh, the detainee was taken to the Muskego Police Department, um, that would be the prosecutors. Oh, my goodness. Department. Would that be fair to say? <laughs> yes. And a second interrogation also took place at that police department, correct? Yes. Any reason why the first interrogation couldn't take place at the same police department that the second one took place at? Oh my God. Yes. Well, the now first we've interrogation got again wasn't at the police department. You know, Mosquito was utilized as they had a lockup facility. So we interviewed you there. Around what time was the detainee taken to the Muskego Police Department? Uh, I don't recall the exact time. And you also stated that uh, another law enforcement <laughs> officer. I apologize for the interruption, but I just want to make sure my jury is in good shape. If you want to just take a moment to stand, <laughs> it's a little slow, I think, for them. So we're just going to stand for a minute. Take a break. Go jump off the mountain. And my apologies for the interruption. No problem. Oh, good oh, lord! Man. It's horrible, but but what, you you think this is bad? Wait until he tries yeah, to navigate right video right and cross going? exam. Anyone? Oh, <laughs> We're gonna have to get the razor blades out for that. All right, we'll sit back down. And again, my apologies, Mr. All Burks. right, all right. Where are we? How do I get this back out? You know, you know where you were. Oh my! Oh, I do this. I do this. Okay. <laughs> Amateur you, attorney, okay. amateur YouTuber, it's all good. It's all good here. Uh, it was fine. another law enforcement officer who actually did the transport of the detainee at that time, correct? Yes. Oh and you stated earlier in testimony that you and your partner followed behind that transport. Is that fair to say? Yes. And I'm assuming at some point that you... Will actually strike that. Uh, you stated to being present during the booking process into the Muskego Police Department. Is that fair to say? Yes. So why couldn't the uh, interrogation be conducted at that time, which would have been 
uh, more ideal considering that you said <laughs> there was a lock, a lock up. I forgot how you referred to it, but basically like a room that the tiny could be secured. Well, you had been talking about at that point when we when we arrived at the facility with you that you hadn't eaten all day, you hadn't slept, so we wanted to give you an opportunity to, to eat, sleep, clear your mind, um, and refresh yourself. And what bearing would that have on interrogation? Same relevance it has here, dumbass. You said you hadn't eaten, you hadn't slept. So I think a person is more focused when they're when they're fed and they're and they're rested. So you know, we wanted to give you the opportunity to do that. And in, in your opinion, how would that had affected interrogation? Oh, I'm going to excuse the jury Fascinating. right now. So if our jury we could stand for the jury, so I can take up a legal issue, please. All right. Oh, this is interesting. I was waiting what for it? it. Like he's he's going down a opinion? completely impermissible line of questioning. Yeah, she might she might call a halt to it, but but he's like that all the time, so it's hard to. You'd have the flag go off if he was represented, and you'd be like, "No, that just makes sense," but nothing he does makes sense. Uh oh, law time. <laughs> Uh, the, dramatic, the dramatic hamster never gets old. All right, so what is this? Impermissible line of questioning, timing. Questioning. All right, thank you. Be seated. Yeah. So I take up two issues right now. One is. One was about uh, the. Uh, both of them. When I paused earlier and told uh -huh. Mr. Brooks I would allow him to. It was regarding the policies, I want to know as the proponent of the evidence why you think that's relevant. Um, and then secondly, the questions I believe that you are asking related to the interrogation, um, unless you can convince me otherwise, go to a legal issue that this court has already determined. Um, and, but I'll hear you out on that. Um, oh, I didn't good want to Lord. make an assumption, this is gonna be good. I also didn't oh, want brace yourself to for stupid have here. you question this witness about what really are legal issues that this court previously addressed regarding the admissibility of the interviews. Well, to the first one, uh, about the, uh, the, policy. the policies, uh, that's relevant because... I think it's, it should be stated for the record why he left his phone recording after he acknowledged that <laughs> the Fifth Amendment right to silence had been invoked, invoked. At that point, interrogation is supposed to stop completely. Well, I understand what you're saying from a no. legal perspective, but that doesn't mean the recording had to stop in and of itself at that point. He did provide an explanation on the record. Um, His explanation was that is policy, right? <laughs> he answered the question. Because if you make voluntary statements, dumbass, then they can... And him testify about the specific yeah. policy is relevant to his testimony. Well, I believe that if that's, in fact, the policy... Your belief is the proof. law. It should be proven that that that's a fact. That is that is a real policy. <laughs> well, we know what? The brilliant, be saying that brilliant. Thank you. And at that point, it makes, oh, it makes seriously him continuing to record after the Fifth <clears throat> Amendment had been invoked. Invoked. Hashtag right now, a point, Ben. I, I can't take this anymore. Sir. Ben needs so to come in. Proponent of this testimony <laughs> through your cross examination. Um, and so without something more, sir, I don't see where there's relevance as to what the specific policy is. Can you see what I'm getting at, though, Your Honor? If he's saying that this is a policy of his agency. Scotland. He should be able to prove that that's policy. Oh, because yeah. at, at that point, if if there's no way to know that that is the correct procedure that they use every time. Didn't why I'm making a lot of generalizations that I don't mm -hmm. think are accurate as to what he said. Um, this is a trial, sir, where the allegations in this case are that you 
conduct it, that you uh, drove through the Christmas parade, <laughs> caused death and injury to a number of individuals. Uh, there's also those other charges related to the bail jumping, the battery. Um, and frankly, his conduct is, isn't on trial. We're not here about a police misconduct trial. I'm not saying that some of this information might not be relevant to his credibility, uh, things of that nature, but you have to, again, you're the proponent of this. Why Tell do you believe those policies? If he doesn't follow proper policies and procedures, or it otherwise relates to other facts, just say that. I believe that. Even though it's weak, just. It can show that. Is he saying it? At very minimum, that first interrogation and anything related to it should not be admissible as evidence. That's a legal determination that I've already raised. Your attorneys represented you at that time. They made a variety of arguments. So and you lost. To then make this. So now that it's admissible. Interrogation, it's not relevant. Just I'm not making no say, yes, he doesn't follow the rules. He's but a These liar, issues are know. legal issues that this he jury stuff up will not be asked to answer. I've already ruled on admissibility. Him. That's a legal determination. He's a rogue. So, um, I've not seen <laughs> the relevance to those specific policies, and but, there is simply no requirement that the state or this witness has to prove those policies. You are representing you know yourself. Hold on, let me finish. You're representing yourself. I'm not aware of any subpoena that required him to bring those policies with. So that would have been on you if you felt it important to cross-examine him on those policies to require that. I'm not aware of that. Have you done that? Uh, <laughs> it was going to come up. I'm going to guess no. I'm going to guess no. Yes. Take them to this witness to bring with any of his policies How related to interrogation. I do that myself, Your Honor. How can I do that from a from a jail cell? Um, you were given all of those blank subpoena copies, sir, and and you could have filled that out in a way for this witness to require you didn't do that. So, so I, who would have served him? <sighs> The state Why are you letting him go sidetrack this? Subpoena. The point is, it's not what we have here. Judge Manning so would have had all this worked I out in a pre trial. The line of questioning <laughs> is on a topic that's not relevant to the issues in this I'm case. <laughs> in so, Even Kim Blandino has more relevant why questions. Why do you believe that <laughs> he really questioning does. him about the policies all are relevant Blandino's to your case? miles ahead of this. It's relevant to the case because why would why would he be recording? before <laughs> people are even in the room and then after. Well, that's argumentative, sir. Trying to get so, your so, statement, you um, know? That's not a legal amendment, basis. Once the Fifth Amendment is invoked, interrogation is supposed to stop. Period. Oh, that's There's great. supposed to be no more recording. He's just going to keep saying No more questions yeah. asked. Yeah. That should be the end of the whole interrogation. Yeah. These are legal issues that you're yep. trying to raise before the jury I've already dealt with the admissibility, so um, you've not provided a legal basis to further Would question this officer about policies related to the interrogation and the recording. He has answered questions. I gave you some leeway on that, and his answers are before the jury. Um, certainly, you'll be able to argue the meaning of that or the lack thereof during your closing arguments if we get to that point. Um, let's move on, though, to this <laughs> issue about... Oh, um, Katrina. Katrina why would just explode. I excuse the jury. And again, I believe you're questioning him about legal issues that aren't relevant, but you're the proponent. You want to question him. What's the legal basis you believe? I, I do like a good labradoodle. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm what a sucker for labradoodle. You referring to? I believe you were attempting to elicit information or evidence, testimony from this witness on issues that are not relevant. Is that referring to the same the same question? Not the policies, policy is what I just stopped uh, the testimony for, because I I don't want to create issues in front of this jury related to legal issues that are not before them to determine. I think I know who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I think I do. To the question about the policies. No, no, no. You were asking him, why did you stop? Why did you not question him uh, further? Meaning, why did this detective not question you when you got to the Mississippi <sighs> Police Department? Why did they wait till the next day? I stop because I know the law on this area, and I know that when a subject invokes their Fifth Amendment, or when you're 
a, a defendant in state, it's the 14th in terms of Amendment quality, yes. nonetheless, right? <laughs> and you have rights under the Wisconsin Constitution as well. But that there's, because you only invoked your right to remain silent, they waited to question you until a sufficient amount of time had passed, in addition to the other reasons. I'm not going to let you question him in front of the jury about that specific thing, or at least Aww. I'm cautioning you that I'm stopping it because I don't okay, see dude. where that's relevant. But if you keep pressing him on that, you know, you're going to open up the door to him saying, uh, because I was following the constitutional requirements and giving you a break in the questioning so that I could right get a statement I believe would be admissible later on. That's what I'm trying to avoid. I really like this judge, but she's too damn sweet. She she is. Is. My concern sure. was we were headed down that path. So if there's some other so reason, the 14th, you, you know, the 14th question Amendment him. would have been referring ben, to. Ben, she actually reminds me of it a little bit. Having an attorney present. But, yeah. Very I'm sharp, very good, now. but just. So you said. Ah, just a little too sweet, you know? When you yeah, say that just you know the law the in that area about the fifth, uh, the fifth Amendment and the 14th Amendment, what were you referring to on the 14th Amendment? I'm oh, good lord, further, sir. Let me just ask the state. Oh, uh, your no. 14th Amendment argument is going nowhere. Are we, are we all frozen or is it just me? Okay, yeah, I just, I just lost my thing. Yeah, all right, let me see what I can do here. Don't worry about it. I'm like Wiley Coyote, super genius. It's all gonna work. Uh, the fifth amendment and the 14th Amendment. What were you referring to on the 14th Amendment? Boom. I'm not going to explain Almost like I know further, what I'm doing. Sir. Let me just ask the state if, if, if they see this. Attorney Bailey, that's exactly what I was getting at. All right. Well, you understand it's my job to protect the record, too. So I want to make sure that. All right. So with that understanding that you are questioning this way. So with that understanding that you are questioning this witness about why they didn't take you to Muskego for the first interview. Is that where you're wanting to go with all of this? That was the question. All right. Well, I might have misunderstood, but in any event, oh. you have the opportunity to talk about the other. Oh, things. for the That's love okay. of God! So, no. is don't is encourage that it. A fair question to ask, then. Oh yeah, ax away, yeah, ax I'm, away, I'm my friend. Now, if I'm <laughs> even allowed to ask that question, I think part of the issue sometimes, <laughs> sir, is there's either. <laughs> Sometimes the questions aren't as artfully worded it. as they could be. I know you're doing your best. I like to look at it this way. Questions that are a sentence at a time, meaning a thought at a time, because then they're not compound, are the easiest for a witness to answer. And when you start bringing in other things, it can be confusing. And then I might not understand, or a party or a witness might not understand what you're asking. Oh, so, um, Looks like it's one of those situations where I was a bit unclear. Um, it's been clarified. Oh, yeah, you're the problem, um, Judge. That's the line of questioning <laughs> that you are going Somebody to Somebody help that's me. Fine. I'm going to lose then it. I, then yeah. I <laughs> would allow that. Now that that's that settled, we'll have no smooth that. sailing. The state objects, so obviously, that's a different story, and then I'll have to rule on it. But yeah, yeah, I no, I'm glad, glad we worked it out. <laughs> Things are going to be different we'll now. Be I don't want there to be, just because I think this has been asked and answered. He was taken to Walkstrom Memorial Hospital for medical clearance. They want to minimize the number of times that he's transported, and they, they needed the information sooner uh, rather than later. So I, I will like be some ob object That's objecting as to ask and Thank answer. You. I just didn't want to, you know, we asked the question that the court suggests, and then I object. And, you know, so I, I do want to put that on the record just so the court's prepared for it. Understood. I'd sooner uh, swig a whole bottle of Malort than touch an old style. You conducted at Mosquito Police Department, but that's funny. Had not been answered. <laughs> I'm going to let you ask that question. So even if they object, we'll put everyone on notice. So because I, I think it's reworded a bit differently. I, She's so just being too damn nice. Fair. That's I'm all. Let you ask that. All right. Let's bring the jury back out. I might have to get me more water too. Thank you. <laughs> Move enough water, sir. More water. Yeah. Move enough. 
Yeah. Ran through this one. All right, we'll make sure there's another one. There's a right, shattered on tent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank we get subject matter jurisdiction? <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, that's a subject matter jurisdiction. What's up, John? How's it going? Sorry, I literally I lied down and I was just out for some reason. So I'm mm -hmm. up, I'm ready to go. Resting your eyes. Uh, you know, I had a big lunch, and sometimes that happens. All right, we'll do this. Maybe, maybe I'll make a thumb out of it. So let me let me do this here. Look at this situation. Oh, Ben, Ben's getting Ben's getting a popsicle or something. Who knows? I'm still here. My mic is in. All right, thank you, everyone. Please be seated, and Mr. Brooks, you may continue with your questioning of this witness. I think Ascarati could handle this, too. I'm, I'm going with all the judges you guys have been in front of. Mm, Ascarati would have kicked him out hey, do a long time ago. Why? She did, uh, she did fine work in the depth file trial. That Police Department. That's all I know. Uh, yeah, so in regards to the first interview at that point, um, as I kind of stated in my earlier testimony, we didn't know exactly where you'd end up. Um, Muskego didn't um, become an option and something we thought of as a final place for you until after um, the first interrogation was, was attempted and was over with. Uh, and do you recall if you made that... Uh, determination yourself or was it uh your supervisor or something of that nature objection relevance ground as to where they were going to take you yes overrule the witness may answer i discussed it with detective casey and at that time that's when you learned that the uh, mosquito police the police station <laughs> uh, was a, a, a viable location? Yes, that's when, that's the point at which we made the decision. Had you ever used that police station before in any of your uh, investigations before that evening? Objection relevance. Well, that's an answer to Andrew. The rules of witness may answer. I had not. Um, but when our department first closed, that was given as an option for us, being we didn't have our own municipal lockup. Oh my God. He spent all that time yeah, arguing and then he doesn't have any questions. Started to conduct the second interrogation yes 12 11 p.m on the 22nd and do you recall how that interrogation started yes i explained to you um i had more information about the domestic um and that's what i was looking to speak to you about do you recall uh, making a statement that we all know how women can be? They're crazy. I do. And what did you mean by that? Come on, brother. Just, um, <laughs> we all know what he meant by that. Report building that I talked about in my earlier testimony. Um, to be honest, even the woman on the panel was speaking to you on a what was meant about that. person level, quite honestly, Probably more than we did, um, more than you guys do. It wasn't a. Uh, judgment I generalized towards all women in the world. It was just um, why did you cute. feel comfortable talking to me as a person? I felt we had rapport. I felt you were, I could tell the night before you were comfortable speaking to me. Um, That's how I closed this. It was, it was, a, a, it was a rapport thing and it worked and you fell for it and you sang like a so bird. So fair to say that that, uh, that comment doesn't reflect your uh, opinion of women. Correct. Please let him rehab his own statement. Oh, please. 
Why did you feel that that would have been necessary right, to be able to report that you, stated that, you, that you already felt that you had? Because it was just being relaxed. I was relaxed. I didn't want to make you feel unnecessarily nervous. We had been, you know, talking to each other in the casual conversation from the night before, very civilly, very um, openly about non-custodial topics. Um, 10,000 hours of Mike's making uh, in this to, uh, live along stream. Those lines. It wasn't um, anything other than that, other than to just uh, communicate with you on a uh, non, I guess. She is good. Stiff level, relaxed level. And do you feel has the detective been in jail the whole time? That other comments could have been used to keep the detainee at ease. Objection sustained. Rounds sustained as to the form of the question. Was there any other uh, conversational tools you could have used to keep the detainee at ease? Objection, same grounds. Overruled, the witness may answer. What is policy on report building? Perhaps, maybe. So it would be fair to say for the situation, you felt that the conversation tool you use would be more appropriate at that time? So just ask that one more time, please. You felt that, would it be fair to say that you felt that at that time, the conversational tool that you use would be more appropriate for the situation? I don't know that I was really thinking about appropriateness. Like I said, I was just conversing you on a normal person to person level, is my, my intention at the time. So it would, be fair to, it would be fair to say that you assumed that that would put the detainee more at ease by starting the conversation with yes i mean it worked along those lines i wanted you to be relaxed that's that's not and that's not anything that um i did just specifically for you mr brooks um it's not trickery it's basically I always want tactics. people to be as relaxed as they can be i want them to feel comfortable to talk to me if they are willing it doesn't change the fact that ultimately i have to read miranda um but i always want all the people i talk to to feel comfortable and be willing and know that they can talk to me if they want to. Uh, speaking of Miranda, do you recall uh, reading the Miranda rights in the second interrogation? Nice segue. Yes, I do. Do you recall how long into the interrogation? Or the topic of Miranda. Miranda <laughs> what? Okay. Objection, misstatement, uh, and mischaracterization of the evidence. Browns. Well, sustained to the formal question. It would be fair to say that the second interrogation was pretty long. Would that be fair to say? Yes, sir. Uh, Do you recall no, when in the yeah, second yeah, interrogation you read the Miranda rights? Your Honor, I am going to object again to the form of the question. Um, the interrogation began. The court made a finding as to when the interrogation began um, prior. I'm going to sustain the objection as to the form. <laughs> question oh that's sad legal conclusion. whoa i do civil defense that's a question did you that's did you immediately start question. the second interrogation with the reading of miranda rights <laughs> no that is not the first thing i stated to you first i explained to you what we were and what i was wishing to talk to you about and do you recall how long you were in that explanation phase of the interrogation to the extent that question was serious, Maybe domestic around litigation. 15 minutes, 15 minutes. <laughs> so it'd be fair to say that you didn't read the Miranda rights till somewhere after already interrogating the detainee for 15 minutes at least. Objection. Ground. This statement sustained. Calls for a legal conclusion. The state's the <laughs> testimony as well. You read the question. You read the Miranda rights after 15 minutes. Yes, yes. thereabouts. 
I mean, I don't do criminal, but we're past motions to suppress here. You you're going nowhere. This second interrogation with the Miranda rights. I'm not required to read them immediately. So those first 15 minutes were verifying your personal information, explaining that I now wish to talk to you about a domestic involving your girlfriend. And then I read them before asking you any specific questions about that event. Which again, would it be fair to say that you had already obtained uh, personal information the night before? I had, but I didn't have yes. it in front of me. And I have to refill <laughs> the whole Miranda sheet. So I had to refill out the top form of the sheet is your name. So I had to verify that. So it'd be fair to say that you had obtained personal information that you didn't bring with you for the second interrogation? I did not have your your information written down at that point. Yes. Do, do you recall why at that time you didn't have the personal information that you had already obtained? No. <laughs> no I, mean. I don't recall why I didn't have it. No, no, I don't. And? <laughs> Again, he doesn't have to read Miranda. You don't have to read Miranda unless you're asking about the specific thing you're investigating. And you said no, you that's, way too, that's way too legalistic for the yeah, uh, information about uh, domestic allegations. That'd be fair to say. He is skirting that pretrial yes, issue so closely. Miranda, if that's what you're asking. No, I didn't. Right. I don't know what you're. What are you asking that? Just so I'm clear. The question was, again, you started off second interrogation with domestic allegations. Yes, that was part of the beginning, explaining to you those allegations that had come forward. In Things the, I didn't know about the night before. Okay. Any reason why you wouldn't explain Oh, God, it's so painful. The he has dumb questions, and then he's shocked by the same. answers. Is there any reason why you never invoked At that point, the domestic right to a lawyer? was part of the reason why you were being held in custody. <laughs> or, you know, shut up? Did you have any more knowledge about the incident from the previous night at that time? Are you referencing the parade aspect of it? Yes. This detective is at that point. Yes, they did. This guy's case. And why wasn't that information given to the detainee at that smart. time? As I explained in my earlier testimony, the idea behind the second interrogation was I began with the domestic abuse issues, um, questioned you about those, and then moved into the um, parade aspect of the investigation. I keep giving him reasons to talk about the domestic abuse, which uh, is not and, really relevant, but right. you're asking the question. Why not start with the all the information you knew? Oh, good. Give me an open-ended question. Grounds. <laughs> Overruled. The witness may answer. Oh. Can you repeat the question, sir? <laughs> Why would you not start the second <laughs> interrogation with the information that you knew? Oh, in regards God. to the parade? In, in regards oh. to all the information that you had at the time. Well, as I stated again in my earlier testimony, um, as we began the second interrogation, I explained it was about a domestic with your girlfriend, Erica Patterson. Keep letting you repeat that. Um, That's great for you. <laughs> but again, I can't give you all the details because part of gauging truthfulness and avoiding I'm not leading you is not telling you every single thing. Um, I had told you she alleged there were physical injuries, but because, because he's you know, helping, I can't really tell you because, because he's helping them were, exactly. I want to see if you're going to be honest and tell me what they were. The judge is going to cut him off soon. As far as Mr. Patterson could cause you to create a lie to avoid those, and it's it's the same issue with the parade. Did you speak to the complainant of the domestic allegations at that time? Are you doing stop sit now? Yeah, they use the word complainant. Um, Sustained as to the form of the question. Had you spoken with Ms. Patterson about the alleged domestic allegations? I did not. 
So it'd be fair to say that you, at that time, didn't know if they were true or not. We're sandwich obsessed over here. Let's talk with Mike. No, that wouldn't be fair to say. <laughs> and why would that not be fair to say? Well, hold on. It's for this jury to determine the facts of this case, including the domestic allegations. So I'm not going to let a witness comment on his belief or not on any other witness's testimony or information. Fair enough? I apologize. All right. Next question. <laughs> Have you at any time... Lily is so confused right now. Interrogation. Spoke <laughs> so many inside jokes in this trial. No. That's okay. Lily Rob does what you do. As is Debbie. Interesting stuff. I, I don't know how you you'll do it. For it. I, I believe it was in both both like interrogations. In family. Um, to reading. Uh, it, it was in reference to the Miranda rights, um, <laughs> stating that if I was at home on my couch, uh, do you recall making that statement? Yes. And what do you mean by that? At home and my, on my couch. What do you mean by that? If you're in your house on your couch, <laughs> I think that's what well, he Miranda means. Miranda is strictly custody based. <laughs> so. I could interrogate you or question you about a matter in which you were a suspect at your home, and I would not be required to read those warnings. Being we were in custody, we were at the Mosquito Police Department. You've been handcuffed. You've been transported. Custody was obvious. I'm required by law, therefore, to read you those rights based on you being in custody. Please further explain to me the legality of every the questioning session that you had with me. Mm -hmm. In reference to that, that's a requirement it's literally, by law. It seems like it. You have to read those by law. Objection. This seems like a really stupid <laughs> law school lecture. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to sustain <laughs> that objection. I believe it's also been answered. So next question. Do you recall if those uh, Miranda readings are to be at the beginning of interrogation? It has been answered as well. Sustained. It has. Ah, stop it, cats. Lily's the luckiest woman alive right now. Appropriate. Next question. Debatable. <laughs> Strongly debatable. <laughs> At least in my world. All right. In the first interrogation, you spoke of uh, <laughs> the detainee being I think detained for a Kathy. order on the problem. <laughs> Did you make reference to that in the second interrogation? No, I did not. Any reason why? <laughs> By the time of the uh, second interrogation, the primary focus had shifted to the domestic incident between yourself and Erica Patterson. <laughs> and um, keep, keep also going. the parade, because by this point, I had more information about the parade and that incident specifically. So what happened to the initial loitering and prowling allegations? Why were they discarded? At that point, they were not the primary concern. Um, eventually, um, the interrogation came to a stalemate, so to speak, and we didn't discuss it. The primary concern was the domestic issue between you and Ms. Patterson, which the, at the time I began okay, to- Okay, no, it wasn't. The primary concern was the, him mowing down people at the parade. Parade. Which, more knowledge on the parade. You can't even sell that to me. It yeah, doesn't matter, but it's funny. That's a little off. It, it's funny that he tries so to say that with a straight face. He made the decision for the loader and filing allegations to be discarded. I think that mischaracter objection, mischaracterization of the testimony, the fact that it wasn't charged conclusion? isn't on this officer. I didn't say anything about it being charged. That's not an evidence for the other reasons indicated by the state. I'll sustain the objection. Just for the record, I didn't say anything about it being charged. Understood. All right. Just for the record, Ben and Lily, the sandwich joke when he was taken into custody, he had a sandwich in his back pocket. So would it be fair to <laughs> like say a, that? he had a pocket sandwich? Got it. In both interrogations, you gave different reasons why the detainee was being detained. 
The explanations did that I explained you did change. However, Jesus, calm down. Again, Jack. the domestic was not known at the time, so that circumstance changed a bit. That became something that was of importance to us. Domestic abuse is taken seriously, and again, there was more knowledge about the parade. Best chat on the net. I do have to run, guys. This was very entertaining, but sadly, thanks for coming by, Lily. Always nice to see you. Glad I could come by. All right, bye. Okay. Thank God we got rid of all that estrogen. Would it be Seriously. Like it? <laughs> it was messing up the force over here. The I'm getting <laughs> interrogation in the second interrogation that <laughs> that can be mis misleading. And calls for speculation from yeah. whose perspective? Do you still like going off the attorney's the notes to the form of the question? on cross? No. Is it fair to say that someone who is being detained would perceive that as being misleading when there's two different re uh, two different reasons why they're being detained that was told to them? Compound hypothetical, speculative, that. stupid, no, what is it? pointless. It calls for speculation. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I was, was going to say, like, who cares? You only need one. It doesn't matter why I'm detaining you as long as I have a valid reason. And by the way, you were arrested, dummy, not detained. <laughs> Yeah, unintelligible. <laughs> what is his direction with this? There is no direction. He's treading water and an idiot. I tried to get Deborah over At here. Any point in the but she's on trial for something. Did you? Which I told her it was a bad excuse. She's in trial. trial. She's in she's trial. Not she's not on, on trial. 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 Debbie is in trial, no, not on trial. For you, yes. There's a distinction. So it'd be fair to say that Gerald Brooks is on trial. Characterizes this wow. officer's answer. Um, it's argumentative, sustained us to the form of the question. Just for the record, there is a point in there where he's sustained stated the form that he's question. Why did you continue to withhold information repeatedly? <laughs> I, objection. He's answered it. I guess at which point? Through the whole, are we talking about in the middle of the second interrogation at this point? What do both point interrogations? Are we talking about? Do both of them? Because it's interrogation. Well, there really wasn't the first one. For. I, I, don't, who, I don't care about the scope. I played my cards the way I wanted to. The end. Next. Questions potentially after you've agreed to waive your right to speak, <laughs> something you didn't do on, on the first day. It is. It is um, indeed. On the fair. second one, quite honestly, it goes back to what I stated in my earlier testimony. Um, I wanted to make sure the information I was getting from you was truthful. I wanted to make sure that I didn't lead you down a path of potential lies. And third, quite frankly, Mr. Brooks, I didn't believe if I gave you the information, you were going to tell me anything. You made How's that for pile of honesty? Interrogation saying that there was no, there was no waiver of that interrogation. <laughs> what? what do you mean? I'm referring to what he just said at the beginning of the answer. I'm going to sustain the objection. Next question. I didn't understand the question. Just move on. Next question. I'm going to sustain, Your Honor. Right, here's what I'm dying for. Is he going to attempt question. to show video? Yeah, I can't get no grounds. Okay. No, it, no. He this is not <laughs> out Oh, no. I think he is. I think he is. I I think this cross might go for six days. I'm not. I'm not making this up. No. <laughs> so you made reference I like to this. not being sure if you would. At this point, the jury members to... might just wait for him in the parking lot and beat the shit out of him themselves. And Ridical, I think, is on top I don't of it. Remember exactly what you said. <laughs> Wasn't How sure if we... you were going to get the information you were seeking. 
Correct. And is that what led you to lie about the information you knew? It's characterized as the testimony. Grounds. It's argumentative, it's sustained. Did that lead you to not be forthright about the information you knew? He doesn't have to be. It's not relevant. Sustained to the form of the question. His words were that he withheld. That, le that led you to with withhold information that you had obtained? I, I'm sorry, did what part with all that? Can you restart the question? Because you were not sure if you were going to get the information you were seeking that led you to withhold information that you had obtained. Well, again, as I stated in prior testimony, strong part of the reason I withheld information is I wanted to gauge how honest and truthful you would be. Um, I think it's important to know you lied to me and this was proven by evidence about your mother owning a vehicle. Um, you know, you lied about coming out here in a tan possible Kia. So there were lies that were told at this point. You lied about being body slammed by officers. That was later oh, proven to be true. Advise the jury of a couple different things at this point. Yeah. Obviously, ultimately, the juror is the will determine the credibility of all witnesses and the weight of the testimony to give for any witness. So whatever any person's opinion about the testimony or previous statements or information from another individual, I'm telling you, is not evidence. You need to determine for yourselves what the facts are in this case. And the other thing I want to remind the jury of is that an accused has the right to remain silent and when that silence cannot be used against them since there was a comment earlier. To the extent that it was commented on, I, um, I'm going to instruct the jury to disregard that as well. Go ahead. I think that just I'm sorry, continue. So it just was so that I, it's narrative at this point. He's going to ask his next question. Okay. If the state needs to redirect, they will. I have not seen that. I need to they see that. reference to, well, let me back up from there. Is it? Yes. Standard practice. Yeah. In your agency to withhold information. Any interrogation? Yes. yes. Yes, it can be to gauge truthfulness. And what do you mean by it can be? So obviously, so a person understands what's going on, you'll give them the basics of why you want to question them, but you're never going to tell them every detail because you want to see if they're being truthful. You want to see what details come out. So I'm not there to help you, dummy. Say by saying that it can be means that it's not all the time <laughs> used in that fashion. I, I, I'm genuinely racking my brain to try and figure Oftentimes out. Oftentimes it is. Like, Oftentimes right. there's information um, yeah. that I won't tell a suspect unless, um, you know, it's something where I've actually the caught the suspect attack. in the act. And we both saw the same thing. But yes, typically, if I want to make sure they're telling truth, I, there's certain information I have, I will hold, withhold that. I'll see if they're willing to provide that. And if not, at some point, the shed. confront them with that information. Um, you had a partner with you during the, well, during both investigations, but I'm referring to the second one primarily. Uh, with, with that officer, had used the same method if they were taking the lead in the investigation at that point? Objections cause for speculation. That's what I have to say. The, word, the words coming out of his mouth, he looks like an attorney. Would it be fair to say that, that the way you interrogate is your method specifically? Yes. So it'd be fair to say that that is not standard policy of your agency. What are you talking about? Correct.
He's actually almost getting close to an impeachment point. He's no, he's not. Never going to be able to close it. No, he's not. This right. is, this is... I'm trying to play devil's advocate a little bit. <laughs> Don't advocate for this devil. Make reference to the suspect's uh, family. Specifically, I'm referring to the children. How how were you able to come into the knowledge of the suspect's children? <laughs> Uh, How do we come into the them. knowledge of? Okay. It's an odd construction, but okay. I'm referring specifically to... I see that on old school law and orders. At the time of the incident. That was information that came afterwards. Well, actually, <laughs> I don't recall. I, I don't remember about if you told me specifically election, where the like older daughter lived that day or not. Well, we... Be fair to say we saw uh, a lot of the second interrogation. Would that be fair to say? Portions of it. Well, yeah, portions of it, but a lot, a lot of it. I don't know exactly how much we watched. That's really oh, yes, they can. Don't play anything. Definition of a lot. At, at don't play time, anything. Do you recall it being stated? where the defendant's children lived? Not that I can recollect, recollect watching today. Had you seen that video before today? Yes. The second yeah. interrogation? Yes. Have you seen it in its entirety? Judge's discretion. Yes. Yes. Was this the... Yeah. He should let him go, especially in this case. Yeah, he's he's going away for the rest of his life. Oh yeah. No, the prosecution you, wants him to go as long as he wants, because they have and, a great witness on the stand. Right. You want the record? Like, if he starts repeating himself three times, then it's real easy to say, "Okay, we gotta close it down." She's gonna start and getting combative with. She's gonna start getting combative with the witness, though. If the witness keeps going astray and keeps going sideways. She'll start directing the witness to answer the question and not go on a narrative because he, he is starting to over elaborate. And she shut the she shut him down before a, a couple of times, I think. Yeah. It's, it's almost as if he doesn't know how to control a witness. Wait, you mean surprise, that's actually surprise. skill <laughs> that requires practice and you know knowledge? No. This is the, the cross that to, never ends. Uh, the second interrogation uh, reference to uh, finding the phone. Did you ever find the phone that is detainee? You're asking if I personally did? Yes. I didn't know. Do you recall where the phone was recovered? In your vehicle. When you say your yeah, vehicle, almost you like he's not an attorney. Your mother's red Ford Escape that you were driving that day. <laughs> <laughs> so be sure to say it wasn't. Sorry for sorry for my okay. Just keep asking, okay. dummy. Oh. Keep keep going. Grounds. Sustained us to the form of the question. <laughs> Can we talk about the domestic and violence? Who was obtained from that phone, if you recall? I don't recall. <clears throat> Do you recall asking for uh, the code to get into the phone? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I do. At any time, you did you learn at any time if the phone was able to be opened up? I don't know if it was or not. So what would be your reason to ask about the phone code if you didn't intend to open it up? Objection mis mischaracterizes yeah, the testimony. Mischaracterizes the testimony. Also butchers the question. English language. Did yeah, you, did yeah, you yourself you intend to inspect the phone? <laughs> no. Yeah. Damn right I would have inspected the phone. I think that's really what we need to so say why here. why did you ask for the code? 
It put all of them. Language was an well, because objection. for the purpose of the investigation, of we have people that are trained in doing that types of thing, getting into the phone, downloading the digital evidence, if if they're able. So having the code would assist them in being able to do that when that time came. And if you were dumb enough to give it to me, I was going to take it. Do you recall if it was more than one phone that you were attempting to access? Yes. Did you ask for the code for, well, back up. How many phones were you seeking to gain access to? I believe it was two. And I do you recall asking for the code right? for the second phone? Yes. Did you inspect the second phone? <coughs> me personally? Yes. No. God almighty, a two on mood court could do a better job than this. And from your recollection, what would be the significance of uh, the phones? at that point in the investigation. Oh my God, seriously? Well, it's really this um, digital evidence that could be inside. So as it pertains to the domestic abuse, it's not known if there's gonna be any phone calls between yourself and Ms. Patterson. Um, some of the data, location data can be relevant, although you were arrested in Waukesha, it still helps to show that data as well. So things of that nature. Um, we really don't know what could or could not help us until we make, until we try to see what's in there. Maybe we could give them a swivel chair to make this more entertaining. <laughs> That'll fix everything. <laughs> Please circle back again, buddy. Yeah, let's ask about the policies and procedures. That would be great. Yeah. Play. Has he not done that already? I thought that was... I thought Dude, there's space. I could have gone happened. over there. I was going to go up to the trial. And the local's like, no, the courtroom's too small. I could I could squeeze in there. Good. Can you throw, like, rubber, like, erasers at his head? Like, just <laughs> every time he does something stupid. I would probably get arrested. I, prob I, I probably just lost my mind. That might be worth it. <laughs> it might be worth it. It might be worth it. At any time. I don't think I would convict you. <laughs> the I don't think I don't think anyone was cast one. That you were with the detainee and during the second day, which would primarily be the second interrogation. Do you recall? The beginning of this question? No, I don't. Any drugs and alcohol in <clears throat> related to the detainee? No, you were so cold sober when you ran over a dozen people. As in whether you were under the influence? Yes. That doesn't help you. No, you were not. And do mm -hmm. you know that to be fact? There were no signs of impairment that I observed. Did you smell mm -hmm. any alcohol? No, sir. That's not part drugs? of the charge, you idiot. No, sir. It makes it worse that you were sober when you... Hey, you're sober the entire time. You chose with a clear mind to hit these people. Did you find any alcohol or drugs? That doesn't help you. No, sir. That's why the DA is not objecting. <laughs> It really doesn't help. And during both those days that... I'm taking critical notes right now for closing the argument. The interrogation and the time spent during the second interrogation, someone was always with you when you had contact with the detainee. Would that be fair to say? Meaning you, you never had... Um, interactions with the detainee by just strictly by yourself not that i recall so it was always you and someone else i believe so if you were drunk at least and maybe could you could argue reckless but this is right now you're proving right? that point 
Well, I mean, he may have used the bathroom at a point. I don't remember. If I was ever alone, it was very short. But from the best of your recollection, you were just never for a period of time. That is the toughest element in Just by yourself with the detainee. The second day before transport, there was a period yeah, of time when the for them. stepped out of that interview room. Hey, Christina. At Mosquito. And I don't know how long it was just you and I in the room, but that's all I recall. But nothing is stinging <laughs> from your recollection. That's his driving no. force, Amber. <laughs> Why can't I make this worse? Was it your belief at the time that you were set to conduct the second interrogation that you believed that <laughs> without the FBI present, <laughs> the detainee good. would likely be more willing to speak with you? Just speculation. Grounds. Speculation. Oh. Yeah, that's easily speculated. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that again? Oh, that's cool. Uh, was it your belief? She'll deny it. <laughs> that the second interrogation without the FBI's presence, was it your belief that the detainee would be more likely to speak with you at that time? He may answer. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Well played. And do you recall how you uh, came to that determination? Yes, it was a sense of how I felt you interacted with me, you know, the night before. Um, as I stated with you, uh, or stated in testimony, no. you know, um, we it's had it. casual conversations. Part of those casual conversations. You're not the idiot. You're not. He is played <laughs> sports you enjoy. It's, Packer game that it's not helpful to him at all. Um, Big correct. bad policeman asked me unfair questions at an unfair time. That's what this is. Yep. Big bad policeman, unfair questions. Yep. What was me? Poor me. Should have been fair. Should have told me the truth. But I'm not one to martyr for watching him either. Stations. Part of those casual conversations were talking about sports you play, sports you enjoy, the Packer game that day. Um, you. I mean, to be honest, I was building your trust so I could intentionally use that against you he's to get you to admit calm, something you didn't want to relax. admit. You are, and you That's know called what interrogation. Right yes. Would it be fair to say that you don't talk sure? to the police? He doesn't shy from I'm it. Feeling at this moment. He's on a he's the totally straight forward about it now. And uh, argument to well. sustained as to the form of the question. Would it be fair to say that at the time of that first? Interrogation, you weren't sure how I was feeling. Big bad bully police guy. I guess I can't get in your head, but you presented yourself as being very calm and very comfortable. Based on your observation. Great answers. Side note, it's becoming the witching hour when things start to get spicy in court naturally because everyone's tired and you yourself are afraid. Any training in psychology? No, sir. What is it now there? A little after four? Yep. Yeah, I, I, I had and to grab a snack. A That's why I keep turning my camera off for a minute. The <laughs> second interrogation, when you were attempting to show the detainee a video. Almost as if he was forcing it in his face. 
what were you attempting to show the detainee? Oh, go. I oh, was my attempting God. to show him the video of when you <laughs> yes. drove your vehicle Indeed. through the parade route. To be to make you face what you, you did, you were being so forceful in trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I felt it was very Come important on, to see Peter. the damage that was caused from the incident. Um, and Detective Stern made the statement as well. You were asking for more information, so we attempted to show you more information. Would it be fair to if say If I could have taped your eyes open, I would have. The question of asking for more information was asked even on the first night during the first interrogation? Yes. Yes. Man, will it carry over to, till tomorrow? The judge just wants this done. I think we'll she'll hang out, me. hoping that he's done with cross t tonight. I want this done. Then, then, then they can schedule everything. I thought the plan was that uh, the defense case would start on Thursday. Yeah. I don't know how many more witnesses the state has. Do you recall, well, they've, they've, um, they've got the little field trip to the car. Yeah, they do. Making a report. But that should be short. Uh, they said it's on, on campus. Oh, okay. The That's night, a the night that, that could be 20 a minute half hour event. That could be as simple as just putting the keys in and turning it on. Writing a report of your interactions with the detainee on the first night in the second morning? Yes. And did you write the report yourself? So how it's done is I dictate it and then it is typed by someone else. Oh, that's lucky. Uh, what do you mean by dictate? That's nice. So there's a phone system that I talk into and it's recorded and then it's later typed. Uh, do you recall who types it? Oh, God, if you going to try and call the stenographer or something? I who it was. So you made reference to a phone. You gestured with your right hand and made a phone, uh, I guess, symbol. Preserving for the record. Good so for I'm you, so Daryl. Assuming that. Very good. That records what's being said. That'd be fair to say? Yes, what I'm speaking into the phone. A secret. And at that time, speaking into the phone, were fair you to say that assuming makes an ass out of you and me. Was it off the top of your head what you remember? Usually or, does. Uh, did you? I guess what I'm saying is, did you speak into that phone based on a report that you had already previously written or had obtained? My notes. Well, I guess I want to make sure I understand the question. He's asking for your notes. Did you ask it again? So I understand. I can. I guess I can. I can. I guess I can be more clear. Um, Probably. I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, by speaking into into this phone, um, would that have been? Uh, which you recalled at the time, or would it been based on a report? Were you that speaking was, from your memory or, or from your notes? By you or someone else? Does it Reason. matter? Okay. There was no prior report, so that what I speak into that phone and what is typed is my best recollection of the events at that time. Okay. That's gave you a little clear. <laughs> I knew what I was trying to say. I just couldn't. <laughs> Good thing to laugh in front of the jury. Very good when you're talking about interrogation for this type of crime. Awesome. Good look. Yeah, that's a good tactic. So at that time, when you uh, spoke into the phone, Oops, not a bad choice. You had you that's had good stuff. Uh, filed your report at that time. Next time they pay for that going to say you should ask for a sponsorship correct <laughs> as i'm talking i'm completing it 
Uh, let's say for court. I don't like minutes. the gray. I wish you would have gone with the color. Red is usually stronger. Filed after being typed. But it's supposed to be neutral. Yeah, and approachable. It's sent to court. Uh, do you recall I, if that was? I like having an opinion ready. That's good. That would be the night of the well, second. I'll give you opinions. That's bold. Sometime after that. I mean, I, I don't hate Daryl's tie. Yes, it was the night of the second after yeah. that interview had been completed. I'll say the tie bars. The tie bars a nice touch, but it is a bit distracting. After that second interrogation, had you learned any more information additionally that you didn't have during the first and second interrogation? No, no. Civil, I go blue, red tie uh, when yes. I'm, it's my case. And did you and put that into on the other court? side? Usually go gray on gray. I believe I did. If it's the one thing I'm thinking of, yes. I try to base my tie, my clients testifying based on their favorite color. Do you recall so how many like reports you filed in relation to this incident? Oh, that's cute. It's actually a really nice way to develop rapport with your witness. They yeah. know when they see the color that you chose it intentionally. Four, maybe five. Well, why so many? That's very clever. Well, you know, you have to understand that after the second interrogation, the investigation wasn't simply complete. Um, there were additional things that need to be done um, and additional things I assisted with that led to, to other supplements being done. Yeah, and yeah, fashion talk. Hey, we're not going to talk about the, 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 the merits oh, of these yeah. legal arguments. Four or five reports. I believe so. I don't know the exact number. Oh, Do you very nice, Ben. The last one was completed. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, and I can see mm -hmm. the, the name change. All right. And with the June report <laughs> contain additional information that you didn't have in November of 2021? The, the attorney formerly known as Ben. Yes. <laughs> I don't recall either that or clarification. I don't. I'd have I to love see my the report, chat. I guess. To know it's exactly the bomb. What oh, they're the best. You were driving at. <laughs> you, you don't recall yeah. what you reported? Not exactly. Yeah, there. Wait, hang on. Let me see if I can do. I that would too. ask what I missed, but can I don't want to know. In this oh God! <laughs> see if the chat gets that one. Not exactly. No, I believe. I don't want to speculate. Good answer. So it'd be fair to say you don't recall. Which you reported in nah. any report. As soon as we go back to the witness. That is the one that is most clear because it was such a substantial huh. piece of what I did. It's not a clip on. And that, that was the one when you spoke into How did he do that? Um, and you, you don't like my shirt? And, and type. Well, they were all done the same way. All, all, all reports are done the same way. No, I want I want him to announce he wants the entirety of the video two hours played because that's what he's going to do. <laughs> no, this is Mike. This is the problem. This is the the video is the rule the pretrial pre ruling, pre court ruling. And do you recall? Like he's about to open to the, open the door to all of this. Oh yeah, through. of course he is. Uh, all of the locksmith because he's about to start opening doors. <laughs> yes, I do. Do you remember the uh, before? Uh, yes, it was a search warrant for your. <laughs> there we go. Uh, jail we'll get him a symbol. And do you recall what that jail property was? <laughs> uh, property that would have been turned over to the custody of jail when, at the time that you were, so personal belongings. And with the, what would personal belongings <laughs> refer to exactly? Are you asking? It could be anything. Anything you had with you. Are you specifically wanting to know what I see? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, your red T-shirt that you were wearing um, on the 21st and 22nd of November, the blue jeans, as well as the socks. And do you recall why you needed to seize the clothing? Maybe to see the match the driver. Was made to 
go back and sees the clothes as it's the items you were wearing during the event. Right. The parade event and is what I mean by event. Would that be the only reason why you needed to seize the clothing? No. There was no. also possible DNA evidence, but I do not know how that came back. Did, did you yourself inspect the clothing? I just retrieved it from the property, put it in a bag, and brought it back to the police department. Uh, do you recall if you seized anything else besides the clothing? Not from your property at the jail, I didn't. And do you recall if that was the only time you came to the Waukesha County Jail to serve a warrant? Correct. That's the only time I recall. Do you recall when that was? November 30th, 2021. So roughly about a week after the incident? Nine days. Yeah, but getting that not right is not easy, like on the length. And I do appreciate that it's a double Windsor rather than a single Windsor. And you may run a double Windsor to get back to the department. Uh, you just got to get longer ties, would Rob. Be expecting the clothing? I have longer ties because I'm a double Windsor guy. No, I believe it would have gone out. Generally, to the I, I do half in hands unless I actually in court. Did you obtain any uh, additional information from the state crime lab? I don't believe I received any information from the state crime lab person. Ooh, a contrast knot. Let me see if I can look that up. <laughs> I'm gonna learn something useful during this. You learn more from this than his freaking questioning. Oh, this is effing cool. Is What's is he? What's he referring? Is he trying to look at a computer? No. It's no, he has, he has go back a little bit, um, specifically to. All right, chat taught me something. Uh, Thank the, you, chat. The night of their arrest. Um, it. When did you arrive on scene to uh, Elizabeth Street? Shortly after you had been yeah. taken into custody. When you arrived, what did you see? Can't recall exactly. I believe you were already in the back seat of a squad car. So at that time, um, suspect was already detained. You were detained. Suspect. Already suspect detained. Suspect is you, Daryl Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is the getting tired part. Um, that was his response. Awesome. It will stand. Yep, this is the getting tired part. Do any search of He's getting tired of this. Oh, yeah. And what did you do from that point? At that point, um, myself and Detective Stern were assigned to follow Specialist Mark Howard whose vehicle you were ultimately placed in and follow him to our substation where you were taken. Uh, do you recall well, let me back up. Do you recall seeing a lot of different uh, law enforcement there from different God stations? I literally think Horrible. anyone on Moot yes, is I do. the dumbest law school in this country would be doing yes. better. And law students are horrible, and they would yeah. get way, way, way better than this. What else do you recall about the scene as far as law enforcement personnel? Basically just that they were there. Yeah, he just has he no idea where he's uh, going with this question. being drawn at Nobody that point does. Or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would take an actor. I did not see any officers over, the over this guy with weapons drawn when I arrived. There were officers with rifles I'd across their chest. I prefer to have my doctor not my lawyer. Pointing them at anyone. Any distinct vehicles to your recollection utilized by law enforcement? <coughs> Squad cars. 
Just squad cars. Mark squad cars. Hey. Drink. You recall seeing the <laughs> vehicle that was. Get my answer for him. <laughs> More like a ground rover type vehicle. Is he going to prison for these questions? No, he's going to prison for no, mowing no, down sorry, no. innocent people. Yeah, that would probably be the reason. <laughs> if we could throw him in prison for those questions, I, I would not be opposed. Yeah, so there's a consecutive so sentence we can add on to this. Scene, I found some of those. Uh, learned that the suspect was in custody. You followed the other officer to the, I'm guessing the police station or whatever it was. The substation. Substation. I'm sorry. Substation. Yes. God almighty man, have your next question ready. Oh, God. And what information did you have at that time? It's your burden of proof. That's all you got. In, in regards to the investigation. The information, again, was still very limited. Um, that he'd been uh, loitering in the area, would receive calls, and that he were identified as a possible suspect that was in the vehicle. Did, did you yourself receive I'm not those a calls? Or you oh, those calls? Just lighting in the room. Jesus, I said this. Already. You mean as in like the phone calls? Yeah, in in reference to the uh, the loitering. No, those went into dispatch, and then they were broadcast over the police radio, which I heard. And did you immediately respond to that radio call? Yes, I made my yes. way to that area. He is absolutely, and in that yeah, regard, yeah, he is succeeding yeah. brilliantly. <laughs> yes, sir. There is a there is Can a point to what he's doing from a perspective. He's he's just exerting power. Like that's what he's right he around right now. in this moment. He's enjoying the power he the has in the first few minutes over the detective. Mm -hmm. Five thirty, five thirty-five, yeah, getting a little after five thirty. And what time did you arrive to the scene? I don't know the exact time. I mean, it was the last time he'll be able to do that. <coughs> While he's milking it. Because I imagine fairly quickly. I want to go back to the I don't phone. necessarily wish death on anyone, although I think it would be appropriate <laughs> here if the statute was appropriate, but the he's not going to have a good time in jail. We were shown. He he's not seem like the kind of person that's going to get along with while in prison. Ben, do you have a YouTube not channel yet? Someone else to claim? The no. Do you recall? Get on so it. I so I have my name down there like yes. that. I don't have a YouTube channel to fly. <laughs> uh, what, what I'm sorry. Attorney formerly known as Ben. <laughs> love it. I love it. It'd be their own reasons. Do One it, Ben. We have to I do me into it. And it's been fun. We have to make sure that we release it to the appropriate person. So that would be important. <laughs> Just calling is guilty. It, is it fair to say that all property attorneys? I love it. Thank you, William. Sealed. <laughs> I guess. What do you mean by sealed? <laughs> like placing the seal back. Yeah, that's it's saying something. Whoever, whoever's to make Amber look relatively seal, reasonable. It's sealed. <laughs> oh, God. Typically, we would take a take property and probably put it. Oh, Grixie, I like that idea. Necessarily seal it and then place it in a in a lock. Would you? Uh, would you write on the? Back who the property belongs to. Well, if it's personal property and it's going to be returned, it would go in a locker 
typically. Oh dear God, is he literally going through data of the procedure um, now? But if it's evidence, it would go you know, to a different place. It, it depends on the type of property you're talking about. Would, would it be some type of ident identifying <laughs> something to identify the property? We'd all be dead. The owner of the property. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe they could add four you more murder charges. Can't tell the warden to jail to serve the warrant for the clothing <laughs> or personal property as you stated it was that property sealed it was in a secure room was it sealed like the bag it was in no it was the bag was just wide open i don't recall if it was wide open they have it in a property bag that did i don't remember have, the exact conditions of it did it have any identifying name on it or a birthday or they utilized a system in which they looked up your name and the bag had a number the number was associated to your name so they were able to find it that way no and don't use the term names i got in the bag i recognize the clothing as your clothing so it'd be pretty fair <laughs> to say that the system that they use is pretty easy to identify what property belongs to whom it seemed to be to get the specifics on it, you'd have to ask them. But I mean, they looked but up. Why have I gotten my library card right out? <coughs> they could have written murderous freak <laughs> on there. Does your agency use a similar method? Yeah, with no. the sharpie, we wrote the guy that ran over a and bunch of people at a Christmas to identify a property. Uh, taking the chain of custody is great. Well, we're not in a drug not case. A county jail, so we only hold in a murder case. Not necessarily all that. We would relevant. take personal property, put it in a. Paper we have bag, a video of you doing it, asshole. Sorry. Locker, <laughs> yeah, typically would correspond with the cell That's a problem. And then your property yeah, would also. You be could actually win that argument, time. and you're still so we long kind of. You may reference yeah. to not being a large county jail. Oh my goodness! Are put the car in a bag and seal it. Holding station. Our standard department that we're back in now has a municipal on lot. video with your Correct. face clearly. It's very small. So it is the holding station. We don't need that. We call it the police Even station. Even if we lose it, police station, sure we're okay. station, holding station. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> no, Jen, we do not condone that sort of thing. At any time during the second interrogation, were there any other law enforcement watching the interrogation from another location? Yes, there were. Can you explain why? Well, again, the FBI was present in a different room because we still did not know whether there was a terrorist nexus to this incident at that point. Is that the only other law enforcement that was watching the interrogation? There may have been some of our own officers. I don't know. That's how, a good question. I don't know. If they were moving around the building or I don't know what they were doing. I so heard anything more. You, you but it, it, it's correct. I don't know. If uh, at that time, there, there was still find anything about you could possibly do for an interlocutory appeal at every juncture to the point that the FBI still were kind of involved at that point. Any Fair. reason why they wouldn't accompany you and your partner for the second interrogation as they did with the first? Grounds. But the issue is he would still be in jail the entire time because he's in custody. Relevance. So it doesn't the thing is, the thing is, wave time and subpoena every single person's cell phone recordings of the incident until the yeah. end of time. That's a good one. Is there find, any reason why the FBI find an investigator to identify people on the videos That's that are really no longer in Waukesha and try and subpoena them across state lines? He he tried a good one, which is try to get held in contempt when you're already that in wasn't bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. But the yeah, it's not knew. a bad try. 
The it's just a big waste of time. I mean, there are ways that you can drag out a trial. You could probably drag. You could probably drag this out for a month. <clears throat> if but most of that's that, premised uh, on criminal. That you and your partner yeah. would be conducting the second interrogation. Like what John and I do? No way. No way. Uh, why did the FBI need to be present? Objection always. Asked an answer. Next question. Now, so once the ask jury's in panels, we're going. Yeah, ask an answer. You've asked why the FBI was there multiple times. You can drag it out a hell of a long time before, before that. Right. Absolutely. But once the jury's in panel, you're going. That you're By going. The way, the, the, that, that's, the, that's the peak of the roller coaster. And and any de and any delay will go against your client if you're just doing it on purpose. Exactly. I think there the are heavy is a, sanctions on that. Is it standard yep. procedure for <laughs> other law enforcement to watch interrogations from a, another location? Just relevance. Browns. Overruled. He may answer. I wouldn't say it's standard, but this wasn't also a standard incident. So the magnitude of the, of the incident is what prompted the change. Usually, yeah, one horse, one rider. People, and yeah. Do you recall that, who made that the determination? Calls for Usually, yeah. one person's responsible yes, for the objections at a time, and they sort of set that up ahead of time. So I'm sorry, just so I understand the question yeah. correctly. Whoever's in whoever's why the FBI dealing would, with the witness? Question: Why they'd be there right. at all? Good time. No, that wasn't. So if you have a dozen witnesses, what is it again? three lawyers, each will question was four, and they're kind of in charge when they're the ones uh, up. Standard procedures. Okay. And I believe the question was. What's the local time in Wisconsin? Four thirty-one. Yep, it's central. Okay. Oh, Ben, it'll never end. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> this is gonna be a thirty-six hour stream. I don't know exactly. Um, <laughs> All right. I only know that the I FBI became involved. I'm curious if we get to 5 o'clock if the judge so will ask how much longer he plans to uh, go. Uh, yeah. my question I've was, got my adult uh, diaper on, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it was, You're going I to ask me. I the judge would like to be done with this yeah. witness today. I don't think the judge wants to have to bring him back. Yeah. Judge wants to get it in. We don't know if that will happen. Clarity, the question was... Did you know who made the determination for other law enforcement to watch from another location? No. Why does that matter? It doesn't. But were you at any time aware that there would be other law enforcement watching the second interrogation? I knew the FBI was coming back. Uh, yes. Um, did you know if there would be any other law enforcement outside of the FBI, like from your agency or or anything like that, were you aware that they would be watching this? Well? Yeah, the CIA is the CIA is trying to nuke you from Uh Not that I knew of, but you do recall other law enforcement outside of the FBI being present. Does the Illuminati? Yes, yeah, so we had um, an officer. <laughs> based on you being office, be in our custody you know. that had to stay in the room with you, their their jail area for the night. I don't know how much of the interview that officer was or was not present for from another location. Did you give any you particular recall, shits about uh, an officer looking over? Out of the interrogation Does it make a difference? Yes. <laughs> And at that time, did you speak with any other law enforcement? FBI. And do you recall what those conversations were about? Not specifically, no. Is it relevant? Do you recall if there was directives given by the FBI? Objection hearsay. Grounds. Um, yes. Do you know? Not what they were. How about Sergeant Smiley? Was he? Was he? I don't recall if they gave directives.
You see, I misread the judge earlier. I thought she, she was requiring more objections uh, to speed it up, but she's been sustaining or she's been overruling. Really the partner time. stepping out of the interrogation room at any time? Yes. Do you know if they spoke with FBI at that time? If my partner did? Yes. I don't know. At any time during the second in, uh, <laughs> interrogation, did the FBI leave? Not that I know of. So to your recollection, they were there the whole time? I believe so, yes. Can we just start objecting <laughs> to every question? He's doing so well for them. Why would they want him to <laughs> stop? At this point, the jury is going to start blaming the prosecutors for not objecting and moving it along, though. That's the thing. Like, <laughs> same with the judge. You might be yeah. getting to that point. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, uh, the guy on the left in that shot looks like tomorrow, his soul was just gone. <laughs> same, buddy. Uh, you made a reference to... <laughs> the kind of code on the phone. Do you recall what that was? In reference to the phones that you were intending to access. I'm talking about, there were two, one of, <coughs> any one phone specific? Uh, you talking about the iPhone? Yeah, the iPhone, I'm sorry. Yes, you gave a pattern code. <coughs> Oh, come and on. The other phone? No code was ever provided that I recall. <laughs> Make it end, please. <sighs> yes, Kestrel, I am aware I am smoking. That's what it takes to get and through. Do you recall if those two phones were <laughs> placed in the evidence? Yes, they would have been. And did you place any evidence? I did not. Do you recall whom? I do not. Please say circling back. Please say circling back. Please say circling back. Now, his hair would have to be a little bit more red and during your he would have uh, to be the White House spokesperson. Investigation. What? Oh, good lord! He can't even remember. You made reference to the suspect being involved during that initial information that you received. Did you? receive information that there were multiple suspects at any time? Oh my God. <laughs> he's going, he's going uh, with the mistake. We're identity. talking about the parade incident <laughs> at this point, yes, no? The parade. Ah, oh, finally, we've got new suspects. Initially, sunshine. yes, so oh, uh, I've got this prior testimony as well. It was very chaotic early on and it. Um, there were, you think course, he'd mention it sooner. Suspects, yes. <laughs> just, just. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh... Yeah, you know, no hurry. Yeah, it, it's all right. Yes, about does it. No further questions. Oh, oh thank God. God. Oh my God. I got some. Um, I would think I could get done in ten minutes. All right, I'm just gonna have my uh, jury stand for a minute. He didn't try the video. Anyone else in the courtroom may do that? Oh my god, we made it! All right, everyone do jumping jacks. Yeah, break out the cocaine. All right, we stand up. Oh god, god. holy shit, we made it through. I have no idea what he actually established with any of that. He established nothing, he established that he's a turd and he's uh, completely unlikable. And annoying. 
But where do you do that? That's the thing. Bad cop, bad cop, bad ask bad questions of me. You're right. Wow. Yeah, I'm mad I got tricked in an interrogation. And, and he was you. trying to convict me as opposed to help me. Mm-hmm. Yup. Mm-hmm. Exhibit 174, <laughs> which has previously been <clears throat> admitted into evidence. Do you recognize this form? Holy crap. It's not leaving. Overrule the witness may answer. It's been testified to previously. Yes, I do. Sir, if you talk to <coughs> the same person three different times while they're in custody, do you have to fill out a separate form each time you talk to them? Objection. Overruled. This may answer. Three times. Yes. Would you have to fill up that top portion of the form each time? <laughs> yes. We all are, Carly. We all That's are. A, That's a good one. That's my favorite. When we talk about, do you call Mr. Brooks questioning of you with regard to recording made by your cell phone at Waukesha Memorial Hospital during the first um, meeting with the defendant? Objection, I don't consent to being caught that night. Noted over Hey, me neither. Yes, I recall. Are you familiar with the term excited utterance? Yes, I am. Oh, overruled the witness may answer. <coughs> what is that? It's also a legal It's situation. when an individual, whether it be Mr. Brooks or any individual, begins making statements on their own accord in not response to a question. Um, well, typically a more to the point, it's a hearsay exception, but I, I get where he's going. Why they're in custody <laughs> in the situation that um, you were either questioning them about or preparing to question them about. Is it important to capture those types of utterances on tape or recording? Objection speculative. Overrule the witness may answer. Yes, it is. Would that be a reason <coughs> to continue recording after an interview has been ended? Objection, Objection leading. Um, overrule the witness may answer. It's redirect. Yes, it would. With regard to the two phones, you indicated that someone else located the phones in the defendant's car. Is that correct? Yes. And in order to access the contents of a phone, if I don't it's know, passcode Mike, I think you might have a new merch idea. Do you need the passcode to enter it? Objection. Leading. Oh, overruled. The witness. Uh, it makes it easiest. They can just try to get through it. The men that do that, the men and women that do that, do have ways around it, but it makes it much more difficult without it. And would it be fair to say that there's not all software can enter into all phones without the passcode? Objection, speculative. Good objection. Oh, sustain this to foundation. Have oh you had God, experience in your position as a detective um, seizing phones? Um, off of defendants. Yes. And have you had opportunities to turn those phones over to your forensic unit to have them analyzed? Yes. When you don't have a passcode or a swipe pattern, have you retur- received those phones back with information that they were unable to be accessed? Objection. Uh, Ask the format had already answered. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, I have. So if you're not provided a code or you're provided an incorrect code, there's a possibility or what's, are you definitely getting into that phone? Objection, speculative. Overruled. No, there is certainly a possibility that we would not be able to access the content. You had talked about um, cross-examination, your reports that you dictate over a phone line. Do you recall that? Yes. Um, those you testified were based upon your recollection? Correct. Do you take notes during interviews? Objection, speculative. Overrule. You may answer. Yes, I do. Do you use those notes at all when dictating your report? Yes, I do. The defendant asked you about multiple suspects, you having information about multiple suspects. Do you recall that line of questioning? Yes, I do. 
Did the defendant ever tell you that there was anyone in that car other than him driving it and possibly Erica Patterson? Objection. Leading the witness. Overrule the witness may answer. No, he did not. And finally, you've been a law enforcement officer in Waukesha County for approximately 18 years. Is that correct? Yes. Who makes the charging decision when deciding what charges get issued in a criminal case? Uh, prosecutor. Overrule the witness may answer. The prosecuting attorney at the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office. You don't have, you don't decide on the charges? No. Relevancy. Sister, mm, it's overruled. You asked the question. We, we can forward what we believe is appropriate, but we don't ultimately make the decision to charge. So when Mr. Brooks asked you, what am I being charged with? Did you have any ability to tell him that? Objection. Objection know. leading. Call that name. Noted, overruled. You may answer the question. Would have won the leading. No, ma'am. Not with 100% certainty. No. Nothing further. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as Detective Carpenter is stepping off, I will read the instruction that I've read for to you every me. day, but it's important that you hear it again. Do not begin your deliberations and discussion of the case until all the evidence is presented and I have instructed you on the law. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else until your final deliberations in the jury room. This order is not limited to face-to-face -face conversations. Nailed it, Greg. It also extends to all forms of electronic communication. <laughs> Do not use any electronic devices, such as a mobile phone or computer, text or instant messaging or social networking sites to send or receive any information about this case or your experience as a juror. If you come in contact with the parties, lawyers, interpreters, or witnesses, yeah, do not speak with them. Hours. For their part, the Definitely parties, lawyers, interpreters, and witnesses will not contact or speak with the jurors. Do not listen to any conversation about this case. Do not research any information that you personally think might be helpful to you in understanding the issues presented. Do not investigate this case on your own or oh, visit this Bible. in person or by any electronic means. Do not read any newspaper reports or listen to any news reports. All right, boys. So what'd you think? You want to do that again? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It was that was the was show of the first order, wasn't it? That was oh. tedious. Oh, my All right. While we, while we still have people here, go. Go subscribe to Lawn Lumber. Go and subscribe to Jay Rabine. Go and harass the attorney formerly known as Ben Bateman into starting his <laughs> channel. <laughs> no, uh, I'm just here for law talk with Mike, man. I, you know, I just ride and, your coattails. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, I might was here. And Lily, thank you, Lily, for coming by. That was brave. That was brave. So uh, I might do it tonight, um, and obviously anyone's welcome to join, but I might cover that uh, that motion that I sent you last night, Mike. I, oh, that, good that Lord. Kind of fun. Oh, it is so bad. It's it's absolutely stupidly delicious. It's about a, a <laughs> lawyer who demanded trial by combat. He has <laughs> since been disbarred, and I believe he's still in prison, but... It's a, it's a really, it's kind of a deliciously insane. It, it, all of it's good, but I like how he said, I want trial by combat against all their attorneys. Yeah, against oh, their, we against can do that? And That's an option? By way of a champion. <laughs> and the judge, through his teeth, and I have the order, basically said, yes, it is within the jurisdiction of the state of New York to order trial by combat, but we're not going to do it this time. Why not? I honestly, I wish I could do, I wish I could do the Brooks case trial by combat. I, I no problem. Bare hands. Well, let's do it. That's what brought, right it, that brought it up to me last yesterday. And so I found, I found the I found the motion. I sent it over to Mike. I have it. So I think oh, I'm going to probably do dinner and then maybe like, Seven ish my time. I'll I'll send out a link to the to the chat and we'll, we'll see. 
That's good wow. stuff. Sorry, you guys, for dragging me into it, but that that's a moment in history. It's a sad, pathetic moment in history, but it's a moment in history. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wave for it. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, I will somehow recover some of my soul that I lost over the last few hours. <laughs> well, like I said, that, that that male prosecutor, he looked like he was literally dead inside. Everyone was. We're all dead. Everyone was. The prosecution team is rock solid. Every, everyone's good. The judge is excellent. The, the prosecution is yeah. excellent. Uh, except one guy. And that's the Gee, one guy which who one? should not be at council table. Of course, there's not a damn thing a good oh, attorney man. could have done for him after after we see what he said. No, today. No, with that video, he's toast. I mean, first he's already on video yeah. doing it, and and there's like a thousand people to identify him. But that, but and then he goes and runs his mouth to investigators. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a. I I don't even know if there's yeah. a plea available at that point because you have so many counts that are just obviously proven. Yeah. yeah. Uh he could he could plea open. What? Uh, the idea of parole someday? In- no, 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 no. There's there's the the deal that the prosecutor relayed. I think it's still on the table. Six consecutive life sentences. Um and then they'll withdraw counts 1 through 67, I think. They'll dismiss those. All right, what does that actually do for you on a practical level? He still die in prison. He's going to die yeah. in prison either way. Well, right. Yeah. But- Right. So what can you actually accomplish for him? Yeah, at so least he what gets. He get, to, what... This is what he gets. Being this. Yeah, he gets. He gets to to make a spectacle of himself at trial, which is that, that's what why, he's doing. Why we have what we have. That, that's the whole reason why he's doing this. I, it, there's no plea that he doesn't die in prison. So what would a lawyer even be able to actually do for him? I don't know. How about Our prevent him from getting killed in packages prison. here? Yeah, prevent him from getting killed in prison. He could cross-examine in less than how would they? Hours. How would the lawyer get him prevented from getting killed in prison? Don't put him on the stand. Don't have him testify. Don't have him make this spectacle of himself um, speaking so callously about the deaths that yep. he caused. That's the thing. Like right. this is this is going to get him into the honor dorm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. Ever evaluated for competency like early on. Yep. Yep. Was he? Yep. Mm-hmm. So three or yeah. four times he's competent well, really. I, think, I think he had four competency evaluations so mm-hmm. that that's not an argument i mean uh, he's thick as a brick but but he's competent he's actually and he's demonstrating that actively right now like yeah. he's yeah. he's a jerk and he's an idiot and he's dumb but <laughs> right he's, he's but within his that. faculties Ain't no cure for stupid. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, good Lord. Apparently Thank it's you guys all. You are all best. I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't know if I should follow this thing or not from here because okay, so they're they're gonna what? They're gonna look at this vehicle tomorrow. That's not gonna go well for them. Here's the vehicle yeah. you mangled a bunch of innocent people with. The jury already wants to kill him. So yeah, you know, here okay, so that won't help. And then what? He's going to put on a defense of what? Well, I, That's, I, that is the uh, one part yeah. that I actually am going to guarantee I that I will be that. watching. His opening statement slash his case in chief. Because he's going to get his ass thrown out of that courtroom. I absolutely want to see his opening case. Um, I think yeah, he deferred his opening statement to the beginning of this case. Opening. I think he was represented at the time, so he was actually presented the option. So I don't think it was his idea, really. Hmm. Oh, God almighty. I don't think it's ever a good idea to reserve your opening statement. It's not. Yeah. It's, I think it's always the, Yeah, I, I hate that method or that strategy. I, I do, too, because you're, you're, you're allowing the other side just free reign for the first right. you know, nine days. Eight. Yeah, 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 without you talking. It, yeah, that's that's like, a total idea. In this particular case, just think about how you would have viewed Mr. Brooks when he gave his opening statement at the beginning of this trial. Now think about how you're going to view him after he gets up, after you've seen the past few weeks of him doing this crap. Exactly. 
Right, like let's say say, uh, we don't have a a recognizable defense here, but let's say your defense is, I I really didn't, he he sort of has alluded to this. It was an accident. I didn't understand. I was was lightheaded or some, some crap like that. Yeah, it wouldn't work either way, but you have a better chance saying that up front. People think, okay, well, that's his theory. I'm not particularly buying it, but that's his theory. Now it's like, uh uh-uh. After all the evidence we've seen, I'm not even listening to that. The problem is that he's trying to kind of have it two ways. On the one side, he seems to be going down this mistaken identity path Mm -hmm. with the, you know, why did you get the shirt? How are you sure that was me? Blah, blah, blah. And on the other side, it was the I was distraught over this fight with my girlfriend, and I just wasn't in the right headspace and didn't realize. John, right. you're forgetting the the the. There's another person in the, in the vehicle that was pressuring me. That route that he pursued for a half a day. Yeah, I. It, none of which actually comport with the facts, but at the very least, it would be. Yeah. You kind of got to oh, pick one. Yes, that chat. The, the, the only thing it would say him is, yeah, if he had an identical twin brother that looked like him, had his DNA. Yeah, it, and I, yeah, I think that everyone's going to discount that anything he says on the opening <laughs> in any event. So he is done. Oh, Natalie's on. I should, I should go over there. And she, she came on earlier. I want to thank her too. Who else is on today? Was Kurt on today? I think Kurt was on today. Kurt was on earlier, but different topic. They were talking Section 230 with Andrea Burkhart. Um, but yeah, Natalie's Natalie's on right now, and then I think I have no idea. Everybody's on. Yeah, Lux, uh, what's Lux, your, what's her name? Um, Lily. Lily Lily Bristol was on. Shit, that was, that was awesome. Poor thing. I did try to get Deborah on, and I did try to get Natalie back on. So I wasn't I wasn't trying to to gang up on her. What for? Uh, you know, you know. I that's, that's the way it was. It was all good. All right, you guys are the best. I, I don't know if I'm doing tomorrow yet or not. I'll figure it out. I don't know. I am curious. I am curious. I want. <laughs> I am curious what the hell he's gonna say now. <laughs> I, I know it's gonna be horrible. I don't know. I don't know. I might. I don't know if I, I'll be able to look away at this point. Oh again, if if you don't, I can. Thankfully, <laughs> Spectrum, I think, finally fixed things. It's God willing. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you all. I, I will see you uh, soon. Everybody, everybody go go check these guys out because they're awesome. All right. All right. Peace yeah. out. Good night. Good night.